open the formal meeting for the Cons Littleton Conservation Commission at 7.30. And we've got uh, minutes to approve. Anybody got any missions or corrections to the 16th and the 30th, October 30th meetings? Uh, let's go ahead and do the 16th first. I just had a question on the first paragraph with Lyle Webster. Um, the fourth sentence down, um, Conscom said that he could submit the wetlands delineation and the Conscom could approve it, but couldn't call the entire lot unbuildable. Without, I don't know if you can make that statement without seeing that delineation. Well, I think even, theoretically, even if the whole site is 100% wetland doesn't mean that they couldn't put a bridge in there and cross it to an upland parcel next to it. Okay. So, you know, you, you can call something, I imagine, something 100% wetland, but I've never seen a con come say, and therefore it's unbuildable. That's, that's an interpretation. Okay. Can I add something? I think you would go to the assessor's office, and they're the ones that generally Oh, call. no, this is, yeah. And that's, and that's, 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 that's the that's whole what purpose the, of this. The, the yeah. course of that was. I just had a couple um, small grammaticals, and some Marco needs to be capitalized a few times. Uh -oh. and. Um, but no, mine were just um, like guide wire versus guy wire. Yeah. So just a couple things. All right, good. I request that I submit my corrections. Corrections. Anybody I'm, else? Nope. I move Would that we accept the minutes as written, as as amended. Do I hear a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Now you want to do the October thirtieth? Yep. Go for it. Anybody else? They got anything? So I have a sneaky suspicion I missed both meetings. Andrew, well, well that was, was a town, the town meeting. Town meeting. Yeah. So Andrew, Anna, Carl, Julie, myself can vote on that one. I move that we accept the minutes as written for October 30th. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Administrative. And even if you weren't there, you can vote on it because yeah. it's it's administrative. So. Uh, I guess we could down a little bit of a checklist here. Uh, Park and Rec proposal to use conservation land for cross scheme program. Let's see. <laughs> you want me to come up front? Yes. Hello. How's everybody doing? Good. Good. Uh, Alicia Day. I know. I don't think I've met you. I'm Rachel. Nice to meet you. Um, Hello. Um, so this is one of the pieces that was on there. Um, the I think the cross country skiing got thrown out um, as like ooh yay, um, but it's more of a we wanted to have a discussion about um, doing programming using conservation and see if that was something that was amenable or interesting. Um, we have been in contact with LL Bean and their outdoor school um, to talk about potentially bringing some of that programming here to town. Um, so, uh, in a kind of my background, I don't know if a lot of people know, um, I used to teach adventure education. Um, so I used to teach uh, cross-country skiing, snowshoeing, all of that kind of stuff, um, winter, hiking, etc. So um, I definitely have a passion in that area. I think it would be really exciting to be able to bring that to Littleton. Um, so that's just something that we're looking at uh, possibilities of how we would be able to do that. So it, we don't have anything set in stone right now. It's just more of that conversation of if this is of interest, um, if that's something that you know you would like to see as well, and you know how we could sort of um, make that happen in the future. Uh, cross country skiing definitely takes a lot more effort than you know doing snowshoeing for sure because you have to actually maintain trails and things like that. So uh, we are in no state right now uh, as the Parks and Rec Department to be able to fund being able to maintain um, cross country skiing um, uh, routes, but it would be something to be interesting. It would be interesting to do the budgeting, figure out you know ideas if it's possible and what that would you know potentially cost. So. Um, that's pretty much it. So would you look to LL Bean using their Discovery School model and how do, what's the, what's the use in the language with incorporating LL Bean? Are they, would they come in and help support the program? in terms of funding or in terms of leadership education? Leadership education. So at this point in time, um, I, there is no way that I can teach any classes. I just don't have time to, to add that into um, So you're using uh, a third party correct, on as a vendor. town property. Correct. 
to do so. so Which is what council, we normally yeah, do for yeah. some of our, well, not normally, but, but often not on conservation. for community ed. Right. Correct, right. yes. On your own, right, on Correct. town property. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a good good discussion to definitely mm -hmm. see if there's any um, legal um, aspects to look at using a third party yeah. um, for it. It's exciting the other thing that would come to my mind would be there wouldn't, couldn't be any advertising on, on, on conservation land. Yep, okay. That would be the only thing I would, I mean, people cross country ski anyway on conservation lands. That's an, not a new item. Right. Right. But a formalized educational yeah. program yeah, would, would yeah. be would be great. I just yeah. um, absolutely and encourage the, the the discussion with that. Yeah. Um, revenue. So bringing in revenue from a third party, you'd have to see where those funds then go, if it then comes back to the town, mm -hmm. or there would probably have to be a portion that comes back for for maintenance and obviously mm -hmm. parking. Because um, a lot of those parking lots are not maintained in the winter Correct. time. Correct. Yeah, so, absolutely. And a lot of them, quite frankly, aren't designed to be maintained. Yes. So they're 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 you know stone. They're not not a lot of them are paved. Right. So yeah. Um, so like I said, this is something that's kind of like our hopes and dreams sort of bucket. We'd love to be able to see it happen, um, but there are a lot of pieces that would need to be figured out, and especially you know that's that's one of those things to take into consideration. Mm -hmm. Are you planning cross country and ski skating? We have at this point in time nothing is set. It's just the we're broaching the conversation to see if there's interest. Um, those are wider. I think correct. A wider requirement for ski skating. There is indeed. So if you want to do just your basic cross country skiing, you just can um, literally you could actually get a snowmobile, put a weighted sled on the back, and actually just like two by fours, and you know have the track set like that. However, if you're doing skating, then you are talking about much more serious uh, grooming. So, um, I think and with the grooming comes now we start to think about that. Some of these trails are made to rest. Correct. As well. Mm -hmm. So it's important to know with the impact on certain trails um, through the winter months and how that would work. Well, there again, you get into the motorized vehicle on right. conservation land. Right. It doesn't have it to be, be that way. It could be authorized motorized vehicle. Well, it could be. But I'm just, <laughs> yeah. just saying that. Yes. Oxen. Lincoln con con on how they handle that cross country. Trip. No, I can definitely look into that. Lincoln, you said. They, well, Carlisle they, too. They've been well, doing. Carlisle's a great. Book. Lincoln is oh, yeah. like really well known yeah. for allowing cross country skiing on their conservation. That's been going on forever. Okay. Do you know if they have like their recreation department does programming out there? I really have no idea. Okay, I'll check I out. Think you buy a pass. Yeah. Home of you buy a farm. daily pass. I'm not sure where you buy it. And, uh, wow. But, okay. But yeah, they. Uh, it's it's re it seems like it's really well run and get okay. a lot of people out there. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, I will definitely look into that. Yep. And I think I had sent you the the K9 training schedule, which is no. up on, up oh, something to keep in mind yeah. going forward. That's only through December. Through December. So we just have to make sure if this happens in January or February to coordinate schedules so the dogs and skiers aren't out there at the same time. Gotcha. <laughs> We're the dogs yeah. and rescue the skiers, but. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's fantastic. That actually could be a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> they need volunteers to go out and sit in the woods for three hours yeah. to be rescued. So Is it search and rescue training? Yeah. Love it. That's excellent. Okay. Great. We all, all right. Yeah. We wish you good luck. Cool. Okay. Thank well, you. I'll keep you in touch if there's any anything new coming. Yep. All right. Thanks. 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 Uh, Hatwell, two hundred four dash five six four eighty five A Hatwell certificate of compliance. What's the? Uh, That's still awaiting Glenn Berger's <laughs> posts. They have to put their okay. bounds on the ground and markers. Yep. Uh, Bylaw regulatory review. Can we pass over that one for the time being? Yep. Property criteria guidelines and rating system for future town land purchases. That's it's Andrews. Let's just move that. Oh yeah, you back. sent that just recently. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, 100 spec uh, pond road notice to sell. That's probably the uh, yeah, That's Jones property. If anything, it's probably a, a rec field. I think is is where people seem to be slating it. But yes, the Jones field. I think. It's yes, all. it's a 10 acre hay field. Yeah. Which would mm -hmm. should contain mm -hmm. uh, agriculture. Field. It's off of uh, we'll offer it for Croc sale. Cricket Lane. Yeah. We'll offer it for sale. Jones. 
guess Georgie uh, Jones and Mary Beth was it, it offered to the town because it's 61A. Why is it offered? Yes. Yes. First yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, first my son had some comment about it because he knew about it that uh, it's uh, pretty near run out on the uh, 61A thing, I believe, and uh, he felt it was good. it's being hey Danny I think is taking care of it now, oh. which should be good, be good at agricultural alfalfa land. So do we want to so put in? Well, so so the board of selectmen is looking for comment. So what do you want to do with it? I would. I would certainly put rather see it as a cultural land. That's the way it's being used right now. Under the concom no, ag land, I think it'd be agcom. Town selectmen ag. ag. The agcom now has the power to hold agricultural oh. land. For so the at town. least a, a letter of support, mm -hmm. yeah. saying that we would like to see it stay within its current yes. use. Agricultural, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Are there any uh, extra agendas? potential land donations? Yeah. Do you want me? Why not? Why don't I print some? Oh, you I can look on. Mm -hmm. If you want. I forgot. He needs his own to do it alone. I know. <laughs> no, I like to do it. My nerves. And uh, while well, she's doing that, how about funds for conservation land sign prototype? Is that something we got to get redesigned or something? Is that? Um, Rick had actually uh, come up with a, an example sign for uh, Newtown Hill. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the driveway, but it's really hard to tell where the property actually is. Mm -hmm. So he came up with this really nice hanging sign prototype uh, to basically put at the end of the driveway just to let people know where to actually go yeah, in. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what we're Heart talking about. Mm. Yeah, Hartwheel is tough to tell too where to pull in. So it she is. Like the, the this is directly a budding um, house. Yeah, Andrew Orchard. Yeah. I've already got one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you might have to repeat what you said so that <laughs> for the minutes. <laughs> We were just talking about the uh, funding for the conservation land prototype. We skipped, we hadn't talked about the land donations. We were waiting for you to. Oh, okay. Yeah. <coughs> Do you have any input there? Uh, uh, U 3296 is on Worcester Drive. It's a tiny wooded lot. Um, if you want to see it, it's it's got a sort of new septic system near next to it so it's actually got a pretty good property line on one side and that's got a paper road on the other side of it um doesn't look like it's impact it's it's small but it's where is it's, it on it's, this? it's it's in the middle of all the oh the mm -hmm. oh the yellow thing yeah do we have the same thing no just for drainage alone it would be valuable yeah, different scale. Right, Amy, just for drainage alone, it would be valuable. Same, this keep is it. One. Yeah, and, and it, it, it's, it, it, it helps fill in that whole mess out there. It's over there. Yeah. Is that the same one? No, there's two parcels. Uh, I don't think that's the same one, Amy. Do you know? Oh, maybe not. I, I can't see it. There's one on Forest and one on Worcester. That's so, Worcester and Worcester's um, wooded. Are they donations from? Um, this this guy on Worcester, I believe he died, and his daughter just wanted to know if if Concom wanted it. <coughs> well, it's connected to two two town lots. <coughs> yeah. 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 Do you want to make a motion for that? I make a motion that we write a letter saying that we have an interest in two potential land donations. Well, the other one is um, on Forest Road, which is again, it's it's a, there's some. Oh, that's the one I stuff. looked at. That, that might be the one you looked that's at. That's the one we were supposed to go on our own, right? Yeah, I'm not sure if anybody actually looked at. I went. It. I, I, I went. <laughs> went I went. Yeah. Okay. On the on the aerial, it did look like the lawn from the abutter had been pushing back. I don't think it had. I think yeah, the mighty is just back there. Um, there did look like there was construction stuff um, off. Off the land or off the lawn into the wooded area. Did you see that sort of? Yeah, like it looked like there was a lot of Is it this? like debris, and vehicles, and whatnot. Oh, on the, the one land? in Sarah's hand is far. On the donated oh, land. Yeah. It's, it's hard to tell because it, you're tell. out We there don't know where the boundary is. Exactly. It was hard to tell where the boundary was, well, and certainly. I, I, I think we want to be careful so about the, accepting a parcel that's got. Yeah. The, the Worcester Road is is a clean lot. 
It's pretty obvious where the, the line orange are, and no, no one's going next to it. Right. So let's go. Know. Let's go back. Carl had started an original motion. I'll do, so let's go back to yeah. the original motion for U thirty two dash nine six zero. So Carl, you want to start with that? I that would, Worcester? That's yes. Worcester I make a motion the Conservation Commission uh, make it known that we are interested in accepting the potential land donation U thirty two dash ninety six dash zero. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. And uh, more exploratory of the other land donation to know where. Well, I don't. I don't, I don't. Let's find out where the property line no, is. No one's going to pay for it. I mean, I don't know how you're going to find out where the property line is. Well, the thing, uh, the thing that makes the uh, this one valuable. Do we have, a, do we have the is highway department? Do they have surveying crew? Do yep. they have in the town have a surveying crew that could go and survey it? I think with I, the I, Green I, International. You'd have to pay somebody to. The thing is that that property looks valuable in that it is a wetland in the middle yeah. of upland, and um, I couldn't tell if there was a connection between it and Long Lake. Uh, I couldn't go in there far enough to see if there was a culvert that, or anything. I, I believe the issue is if there's construction debris. Yeah, we how don't much? Is that enough we can just haul out of there? Yeah, well, I mean, but you want to know what you're getting into Why? before you... Asbestos. We have no access to it, first of all. Painted concrete contains lead. It could be, like... Five hundred thousand or more. Well, to just well I think it needs further investigation. Yes, to find out what's I, in there. I agree with that. I mean, I could take no. a more critical look at it from that. St it was raining. Great. That'd be great if you could do that. Like I went. We'll ask, we need to ask the owner. Well, that's yeah. So can we have but access? They could actually to go, do like, sampling. That would be good. Or well, just we have access to that lot, but you can't get to that lot without crossing it's, other people's exactly. properties. Exactly. <laughs> that's that was yeah right because the other I also tried the northern side. <laughs> yeah. And even like that was and it, coming in from. Is it Grove? I think it's it's all wet. You can't yeah, it's that very way. it's very well, wet. And there's that piece. Yeah. But I thought that uh, at but there's I a bunch of cars the up of that there. If we road, own that. That's, at the end of that road, doesn't it just continue as an easement? It, <coughs> I mean, it's a paper street. Yeah. It's not their property there. It's wood. It's just not like an actual. It's it's a paper road. But yeah, I'm not sure. It's on paper. It is, but you can't drive through there. But it's not their property. It's still a paper road. Oh, like we could walk through there. Yeah, you could walk through there. I didn't have the right footwear that day to walk like all the way through. No, but I would just. It seems like it just needs to be a little more exploring. Potentially, I think it's worth it because it is a wetland area. So I think it's worth it. I agree with the drainage and the wetland for sure. I would agree with that. These little lots are tough though because all you do is run into problems with. A butters. Right, dumping yeah. things. Because mm -hmm. none of those are monitored. None of those lots out there are monitored. Well, we can, I mean, you could send letters, though, right? Like, hey. <laughs> Sometimes a little lot can turn yeah. into a big lot. Well, no, it can. Yeah, it's it true. Can. And I mean, it's in right that, next right, so to the guys, lake. What do we want to do right. for a motion on it? Do you want to go with a subject to the exploration if it's uh, past? Well, do you want to do a site walk out? I mean, I, I'm not sure. Subject to to what the owners so go forward with it. Move to Florida. To he doesn't approval yeah. of the board members. Yeah. He doesn't want to pay to do anything. That's for sure. It's not like he's got an engineer or anybody. He just wants oh, to get rid of the property. Right there. Well, I mean, right? That's. Yeah, I mean, I was looking at it from a natural resources standpoint when I was looking at it, but I can certainly put my, you know, other due diligence has investigation hat on and go look at it again. I could go with you because with better I also footwear. Have yeah. Background. So can we yeah. uh, table this discussion? Let's, let's, let's table go, this discussion to the next yeah, yeah, meeting. Yeah, you're going to do I do a lot of it. It is a budding yeah, town perfect. land, so it would just be oh, in due diligence. Yeah. Okay. But do you want to make so a motion? Adam, we'll to accept it too. No. Yeah, yeah, I think okay. yeah. they're going to table it till the next meeting. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. I think that's a good idea. Let's start with the public look. hearing. Uh, public hearing notice mm -hmm. of intent 22 Pleasant Street, U 3924, Mass DP 204 861, replacement of a failed septic system. You happen to be right on Mill Pond? Correct. Yeah. There's Mill Pond here. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're not yeah. right on it. What's <laughs> your step back to the shoreline? Go for it. Here's, let me give you the review of the site. And you are? Neil Gorman <laughs> from David Ross Associates. <clears throat> Here are my green cards. Thank you. I emailed. Yeah, I, I got that. Great. I also <coughs> have 
Do they have a copy of the waiver letter that was submitted or no? no it, it was electronically, but I don't think okay, they have so paper copies. If I, anybody needs a copy, I have that here as well. So the property sits right at the corner of Curtis Street and Pleasant Street. It's approximately 100 feet wide and about 340 to 350 feet deep. Um, this signifies the edge of where Mill Pond is. This is the edge of the bordering vegetated wetlands associated with the pond. Here's the existing dwelling, existing detached garage and driveway. Um, right now the site is mostly lawn right up to the edge of the bordering vegetated wetlands. The existing sewage disposal system which is in failure is in front of the house. Um, it's quite small and quite old. Um, coming in from the road here is the town water line, so it's served by town water and not a well. And the proposed sewage disposal system is tying into the existing plumbing out the rear of the house to a new 1500 gallon tank, followed by a thousand <coughs> gallon pump chamber, and then pumping uphill to a raised Presby and Viroseptic leaching system. You all familiar with the Presby system? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the nearest corner of the leaching system is approximately 24 feet to the BVW. The question was, how far are we to the pond? We're about 75 feet to the edge of the pond with the leaching system. Being that it is a raised system, there is going to be some fill brought in to build up around the leaching system. <laughs> and um, the nearest activity will be a, the construction of a boulder retaining wall where the grade is trying to catch that three to one slope before we get to the vegetated wetlands. Inside or on the system side of the boulder wall will be a 40 mil poly barrier installed um, to help prevent any seepage in that direction. Um, again, the, the entire system is within an existing lawn area now. There is no proposed trees to so be it's removed. It's a boulder wall, not a retaining wall. It's not a concrete block interlocking wall, no. It's a, it's a boulder wall because it's outside of 15 feet from the leaching system. This might be the client. Here. Is this Martha? It is. Hi. <laughs> One of the property owners, this is Martha. This is Conservation Hi. Commission. We got yes. started here. Okay. So, no, it is not a, um, it's not a block, concrete block wall. It's, it's more of a natural stone wall. Is this currently approved by the Board of Health? It is on the agenda for next week. Okay. Um, under the Board of Health, um, we are seeking just one variance to the <coughs> Littleton Board of Health regulations, uh, which is regarding the boulder wall being within 10 feet of a property line. Otherwise, it meets the Littleton Board of Health regulations 100%. We are seeking two what we call local, Title V local upgrade approvals. One is for a sieve test because it, the groundwater was too shallow and it was too wet to perform a percolation test. So we sent it to the UMass lab and we were deemed to have an eight minute per inch percolation rate. Um, and the other variance we're seeking <coughs> is under a local uh, upgrade of Title V is to be less than 50 feet to a wetland with our leaching system. And as mentioned earlier, we're at 24 feet. Um, and nothing changes structurally to the to driveway, house, everything remains the same? Correct. It's just straight repair for an existing failing system, no increase in design flow. Okay. We wouldn't be able to do anyways because of we're seeking these two local upgrade approvals. Okay. And the other thing to bring to your attention, I know that Presby systems are often used to take advantage of their two-foot groundwater offset reduction. Mm -hmm. Because we are less than 50 feet to the wetland, uh, we are not seeking that option. We are the full four foot offset to the groundwater between the bottom of our leaching system and the high groundwater, which is only at 18 inches below grade. So um, we're, in our eyes, we're at maximum feasible, com feasible compliance mm -hmm. to meet Title V and the Littleton Board of Health regulations. And then um, as in the letter, we are seeking two waivers under the Littleton Wetland Bylaw which is uh, allowing disturbance within the 50-foot no disturb zone. And um, under Section 6.1, the proposed system um, construction does not trigger the thresholds one through four of the requirement of compliance with mass stormwater. Single-family home, uh, yeah. we're not 
altering any of the drainage or anything out there. So. And it's deemed in failure presently? I believe so, right? There was nothing wrong with it in terms of its operation, but it did not pass with Title V. Right, because it's most likely in groundwater, okay. being that it's only 18 inches below grade. The one in the front? The one, the small one in the front, yeah. And that was explored, you know, keeping it in the front? We, uh, the gentleman who was on site that did the soil testing with the health agent, Jim Gariffey, they did pursue looking out front in that area. Um, and Jim Griffey and him both determined there's not enough area. If you look at the size of this leaching system, to put it in the front, we'd have to move the water line. We have to be 20 feet off a foundation and 10 feet off a property line. So we're basically, the front of the house is only 34 feet from the, from the front property line right now. So it was just too small of an area, and this is really our only option. Yeah, I didn't know, I, I, I don't know enough about it, but I, I thought there were like tight tank all alternatives. Correct. Don't, a don't tight tank is fields. which you could have By, pumped all the time. Right. And a tight but tank that is and, an option, right? It is an option, but it's the absolute last feasible option that the state wants to see, mm -hmm. as well as the town, because it's the least safe. Right. Mm -hmm. um, people don't have to pump. It could technically. People will find their way around of. Yeah. Oh. If and you have to pump it twice it? a month and it gets pretty expensive, yeah. you're going to... Yeah. <laughs> so that's one thing. Two, um, it, you know, for an existing home, it, it's it's not a viable option unless it, you have no other option. Right. Um, it, it's, we have we have space. We're, we're asking for very few variants or special approvals through the Title V, which is the environmental code as well. Um, you know, in our opinion, it's it's the best we can do with the site that we have. What's the, the what's the closest distance to the wetland? The the leaching system is 24 feet. 24 feet. No. But but the grading is like. The grading goes to within say five or six feet where the boulder wall will be. And okay. I was also reading that the the entire lot, with the exception of 1,300 square feet is within the 100 foot buffer right yeah, yeah. the 100 foot buffer zone is here in yellow so that yeah. one little triangle up there in the corner correct? yep i don't see the opportunity to move it anywhere else it's no. yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. Um, but do you want to wait on passing on it until they get the board of health approval it would be their risk right it would be our risk so to amend the order of conditions if anything changes but to be quite honest our experience is you know, Jim Griffey's already been out and looked at the situation. Yeah. And we don't anyway, anticipate any changes from the board. I had to look at it when I realized what we were up against. Okay. It's certainly your prerogative we're okay to close, but it's your prerogative. We do meet November 20th, but is it your wish to close? Um, the, what they're asking is if they close the hearing, if we have to come back with any changes, it would be at that point opening a new hearing, which is notifying all the abutters and doing another advertisement in the paper. Um, so by waiting one week to make we, sure the Board of Health doesn't have, I, well, I we guess. We might as well wait, I guess. Okay, so yeah, how, yeah, it's, we can wait till their the, approval. The and we then, meet again November 20th, and I think the, the commission is okay. fine to do so. Fair enough. So we'll so request to yeah. continue so the So you would have our support, I would think. Yeah. Yep. Everyone in yeah. support of that? Yeah, if, if I can, just, I, I just had a couple questions. Um, I didn't see a detail of the siltation barrier. Is that it on, is on, on there and I missed one, it? It is on one right here. Okay, all right. Keep one. And any stockpiling, dewatering? No, I mean, the, the Presby manual clearly states to, to install this during a drier season. So we're not intending to have to do any dewatering. Uh, if something so comes up, we'd have order, to come. The order condition says no stockpiling or dewatering unless otherwise right. already identified. So just yep. let you know that's out there. Okay. Mm -hmm. And did you want to apply the pesticides fertilizer language? Oh, yeah. I mean, if it's all within the 100. Mm -hmm. so. It's lawn now, it'll be lawn when we're done. Yeah, so it would. Yeah. yeah. Good. Okay, right, so, so we will see you again anything. on November 20th. And everybody is in support of it, so we go to the Board of Health, they're not going to have any problems. Great. Right. Appreciate your okay. time. Yep, thank you. Thank Good you luck. very much. Okay. Uh, would, you, would you, I'm sorry, would you want them to come <coughs> back in if there's no changes? No. Or just, no. if okay, you don't so have any changes, you don't need to come back in. Yeah. Okay. okay. We'll, just, we'll, we'll be a formality. We'll, we'll give her a sender an email. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Good Fourth Pond is not uh, isolated. Yeah, Fourth Pond's not coming in. Uh, the uh, Chuck Karen is, we're meeting out there at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. So 
there's nothing to report on. So. Okay. Um, so we can't start till 8:05. Jim, do you want to do <coughs> any of those requests for compliance down the bottom? <coughs> or. Yeah, we can try the uh, request for certificate compliance 27 Fort Pond Hill 204-603. Or are they any of those coming in? Uh, oh, that, well, that one's definitely got to have a site walk. Yeah, he, he couldn't make it tonight anyway. He did clear out. Um, he said the end of those culverts. Um, I overlaid the approved NOI plan and what he sent is the as built, and I was confused. Um, so, so it's ready for a site walk. What yeah. about 10 Pleasant Street? What's the issue? That's the same as? That that was an old septic system the house just sold, and they realized they're cleaning up paperwork. I went I went out there, and everything's long, stable, and they're not doing anything in Mill Pond they shouldn't be doing. So, <laughs> <laughs> so let's make I move that we issue a certificate of compliance for 10, 10 Pleasant Street, uh, Street <coughs> 204726. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, if they're not coming in for 27 Fort Pond Hill, until they come in, I would not do a site walk. So is that a continue? That would continue it. But that has, there's issues on that site. Okay. Do you have the paperwork for uh, 10 Pleasant? Yep. Andrew, do you want to talk about your rating system? Oh, yes. So um, I don't know if everybody got this a little earlier today. I sent it out at like 12 o'clock. I did print out a couple. Well, I didn't print Amy printed these out. Um, there's a couple of extra paper copies if anybody would like I'd to like one. have a look. Yeah, I'd like one. Okay. That's one copy. Thank you. Okay, this one I scribbled notes on it, but I'll send it down. So uh, basically what we have here is um, a very, very rough draft of um, a potential criteria checklist or rating system for um, any properties that the town would consider buying for open space purposes. Um, I guess how it would work is a property would come up and we'd apply this checklist to it and depending on the score that would uh, basically direct our intentions. If it didn't uh, score high enough, we wouldn't consider it. And if it scored within um, an acceptable range, then we'd pursue it. Uh, but we have quite a, a list of uh, uh, questions here for each property. There's 20 questions total. And we'll add to it and uh, take things away as we go. But um, I think this is a good starting point. So we're going to work on it a bit more. And if you guys have any edits, uh, or if anyone's seen anything like this from um, their passings with other towns or things like that, it might be nice to. No, but Audubon, I know, came up with that prioritization statewide system. I don't know how they came up with it, but most wanna. most towns do keep like a list of like twenty properties that they like. We really want. We're doing it differently. We're kind of going as they come up. We're going to rate them and see if. They're uh, something that we'd be interested in. Just Are you saying that they came up with a different, a new checklist? No, it's, it's their map thing. overlay of maps. They're biomapping, oh, okay. but oh, okay. I so they prioritize them some way. I don't know if they considered recreation though. So mm -hmm. it might be just purely, you know. So, yeah, so it's not really site specific. It's, right. yeah. um, but uh, number and, and one. I, oh, sorry. Yeah, no, go ahead. Uh, number one, it seems to be two questions combined. It is, yeah. Oh. Some questions have two parts, and they count as different points. I'm still working on trying to figure out a, an actual like scoring system, like how much a question would be worth if it's a right. positive or negative answer. And then the second parts are going to have to have a, a point mm -hmm. system. So we've got to yeah. work on a matrix and just kind of work on it a bit more. No, it's a great outline. Gracias. Yeah, <laughs> really yeah so I think if anybody really can, can look at this and send any comments to Andrew that'd be great. And, and I, I've got Acton did was looking at something like this and it was ungodly. <laughs> oh <geez. laughs> it, it, we we had a workshop on it so I'm not sure if they're moving ahead with it, but it was um, you look at the plot, you look at the vegetation, whether or not there's stone walls, archaeological features and, oh, and they okay. had like draft plants plants. Um, do you know Shelby over there the I'm not even sure what he is. Um, the permit coordinator or something. 
he's kind of new. But oh. um, l let me see if I, I'd forgotten about that. Let me see if I can. It, it was really detailed. Like you might pick so. up something that we've. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, we. Uh, I'm yeah. sure. We, I don't think I've gotten everything. <laughs> no. <laughs> so are you limiting this to just purchase, or is it could it be for conservation easement? If someone wants to sell us an easement and. We could potentially restrictions or different things like that. That's a good question. I think this list here is mainly just for the property itself. Um, maybe we could come up with a separate one for potential restrictions or easements. Um, yeah, we'll we'll keep working on it. Yeah. No, that's good. Uh, can I just mention something that I noticed today? Sure. The 17 acres next to Newtown Hill that's up for sale. Yeah, it has been. Yeah, I saw that. Steve, whatever it's steep going in yeah one of the about called and said thought the town should buy I said great got any money how much are they selling it for I didn't see any sign I would just uh, notice the sign which kind of surprised me I that it was all up for sale mm -hmm. it's a fairly large parcel kind of adjacent to conservation it is yep. if, if you go up Newtown mm -hmm. Road um, heading towards like Acton you get to the very top of the hill near the driveway for Newtown there's a big orange sign that says yeah. 17 acres of buildable land for sale oh. so okay. does that belong to Sprong uh, no the, I, I forget the name of the owner um, I'll have to ask John McIver I think he knows mm -hmm. okay. Uh, continued, uh, got to move along. Um, continued public uh, hearing notice of intent 73 Hot Lab uh, 17-57 Mass DEP number 204-859 construction of a single family home. Hello, I'm Glenn Berger. Been here before. Uh, I think that uh, <clears throat> we understood from the last meeting. Oh, okay. Color one is better. Uh, the engineer is on vacation, so uh, he. Uh, I think this is pretty straightforward. We were uh, discussing back and forth whether this was uh, PVW or not, um, as opposed to isolated land subject to flooding. We've acknowledged that we'll go with the uh, uh, BVW. And so we just like uh, an approval of the BBW as it's proposed. Okay. There's a question I've read back through the old notes with National Heritage, an update. I have not gotten an update from them. They 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 were holding modification of the permit until resolution of the the bounds and then the the turtle barrier when you do construction. I think were the two. That's right. Issues they had. That's right. And they, they're just looking for us to submit paperwork and uh, show them what we're going to do. And they gave us uh, a template for it. And once we're finished with conservation and, and the Board of Health, we'll submit it to them. So submit what to them? The complete plan. They want to see grading. They right, but, but they, they, they want, they, they need it, as does the commission, the actual bounds put into yes, place. Yes, yeah. in addition yeah. to that. Yeah. Yeah. So you're looking tonight just for um, verification of the wetland line? That's it. So Ted and I went back and forth on this a bit, just moving some stuff around. The only thing I noticed that you can either do with words or just, you know, kind of say you agree with the intent of this plan to do the finals is that these just need to be attached that needs to be closed off that's just a drawing issue mm -hmm. you like to see this these two green lines attached to the well, dotted line yeah exactly like right there yeah there we should, there okay. should you know maybe maybe to triangle off to a point like that okay. he left these open as i asked because the wetland you know kind of keeps going but it's way off property and doesn't affect the buffer zone when you're coming mm -hmm. this direction mm -hmm. Everything's labeled. Um, the wetland down here does not show, but he added the 15 100 foot buffer zones from that. So that's the one that was requested at the last hearing was to show off locus wetlands. Yes. Okay. Which he took from the old information. It, it, it's not a new survey. But. Ask if 
questions? Are there any questions from anybody? Did it, Amy, are you, um, did the 100 foot buffer, like, is that something that's been verified with the other wetlands by you? The the far what is that the eastern wetlands? Yeah, I have not gone down and and confirmed where that is. You know, I know it's fairly that's off. That's off property. It, it's, it's yeah, off property. no, I understand it's, that. It's but to map out the hundred yeah, foot buffer, yeah, it's reasonably steep in there. Yeah, um, to where the wetland line is. The red is the fifty, right? And then the yeah, the red's the fifty. 50. So, based on this, and this is the CR line, this purple line right here. So based on this. All the buffer from that wetland, yeah. you can't get near anyway. Sure. So even if it did shift, it's not going to shift 50 feet. Yeah. Um, but that's. Okay. So I assume there's some question about whether the bounds are in place for the. Uh, there the will be. Heritage. There will be. <clears throat> we haven't done that yet. But that was part of the original filing years ago. That the bounds were supposed to be set. That's right. We went to Natural Heritage in the last couple of months, and that was one of their requirements in order to give us a, the permit for this, that those bounds be set. Which would also be one of our requirements as well. Yep. Before we pass on this or not? Oh, no, I'm just saying. As that, a continuous. Not, not before we pass on this, but mm -hmm. before we, right. when he submits the complete project to us. Because mm -hmm. yeah. that would potentially not include just this property, but you know, abutting properties. What I think it's like five lots. Well, and they're still it. waiting for 85A. They can't get their certificate of compliance until those bounds are set. So you have someone that's been waiting for something that was supposed to be done years ago, trying to sell their house. So they're trying to get a certificate of compliance. They've been in a couple I, times. No, I know. But I, I, think it, I think it is to sell. Yeah. yeah, their house. <coughs> sure it's on the market. So you can hold that to this property. It's never been done. So if you choose to do so. You're but saying, you're, well, uh, could you clarify what you're, you can do what? In tight. Not tie to approve this until you do what you're supposed to have yeah, done. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm. But it hasn't been done. That's it hasn't been done at the point. moment. Right. Mm. And what does that entail? I mean, is it the bounds of the property line? Even just property line for natural property heritage. Bound. No, property, I think it's property bounds. Yeah. It's the CR mm -hmm. bounds, where it hits yeah, the CR yeah. and makes okay. turns. There's two natural dish. heritage bounds. Yes, natural heritage would be, because the property well, goes beyond. Just hold it. Yeah. Well, it's conservation yeah. restriction. Yeah. You guys yeah. own the, the, the conservation yeah. restriction. Just hold it. So it's hold bounds it. to it let people know that that's CR land? land? So everybody knows, yeah. Similar to the, the signs that we've been putting up? Because Amy had asked for yeah. it to be done on the plan. In other instances? Yeah. I mean, it, it could be, you know, a pin. It could, you know, that detail hasn't been hashed out. So, I mean, what you're asking for on here from the engineer, you had asked Ted to bring this line down? It just needs, it just, that connection just needs to be made. Okay. The, the green to the blue. So, we can't accept that plan until that's done. Anyways, on a stamped, because the owner can't yep. draw that in. No, that's true, and it does need to be stamped. So, I would continue it till the 20th, and then hopefully you'd have a plan that's accurate. Can we vote on where the BBW is? This is not part that is, of that. It's what's that presented. Is BBW. Hmm. I thought the green was BBW. Um, it's BBWB. It's the boundaries so it's of BBWB. Essentially. That's yeah. point. I don't think we can do anything until that's drawn in. Uh, and, 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 the and literally, I think Ted just ran out of time to get it done. He and I are going back and forth about which ones need to be open. He'd sketched in the stream. I said, you, should, you better survey the stream. So he had to go back out the survey stream and just didn't connect those dots. Right. You, we held them for all the other parcels for um, some of the other applicants. So just you have to be consistent. So what's your feeling about the bounds for the natural heritage? You want the uh, them in place before we pass on this? Well, do we have to decide what they are, are before? Well, we they're already decide they decided, decided years ago years by years National ago. Heritage. Well, the, the actual physical type. 
physical type. She's it hasn't been. It, it was just. A, it just said. Just it hasn't been decided. It has been decided and hasn't been done. No, it's no. been decided that they're needed. It doesn't. Yeah. It hasn't been decided. Not there what are they're choices look like. that were read whatever three meetings ago or something the first time we discussed it. That yeah. there were choices of different types of markers. Do we need to decide that before they? Why don't you let me know what type of marker you'd like? Isn't this National Heritage's decision? I, I thought Ted was going to match National Heritage and see what they wanted. Yeah, this is this is not our decision. Yeah, this is a decision that was made years ago when it was, it was first approved. It was supposed to be done. So that, while we're asking it to be done, it is my understanding that is National Heritage's decision. Oh, they've already decided where it goes. Um, so uh, determine the type. Lost. Yeah. <coughs> we meet again on November 20th. And you have a, a butter on if you have anything you wish to say. Okay. I guess we'll continue it until the 20th. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Right, thank you. Uh, can you go ahead and do Turkey? Yeah, I, I saw him. Are they yeah. coming in? We've got I'd to work be on surprised the that we're on time. Right there before mm -hmm. it even really started to rain. I'm surprised that we're on time. Mm -hmm. I went on the yeah. And the farm pond is ridiculous. Yep. Is it? They've been up there for a while. We'll that part at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Hello. Is it me? Uh, for the record, Brian Goodyear with Hancock Associates. Um, so, Derby Farm Builders is on the agenda for this evening. We don't really have too awful much to share for you. That's good. Um, so, except for the rain mm -hmm. and the flooding. Mm -hmm. Except for the rain. Um, to give you an update on planning board, planning board has asked that we get a peer review of the proposed pipe. Um, that plan has been before the commission for a couple months now. It's been before the planning board for a couple months now. So we're just chasing that one piece. Do you have, while you're speaking of what's been submitted, do you have the spreadsheet elevations that were requested? back in July? Uh, I do not have a copy of those. And okay, neither do we, and we've requested them numerous times. So, so, so Mike Gennetti is the one that was doing the measurements and coordinating that with Dave, so I will have Dave get with Amy over tomorrow and get that sorted out. Okay. Yeah, it seemed like there were like three different people that had yeah. information before the product. So the last that I talked to Dave, Dave was working with Mike to get them to you, essentially. So I will... Make that phone call. So to remember that was based one of the requirements also through discussion under these enforcement orders is to have the paperwork that follows through. Mm -hmm. um, do we have a moment that we can talk about any of the water that's on site in um, Farm Pond or at the intersection? Um, I was out in between storms. How did it look? Wet. Flooded. <laughs> Farm pond in? Yeah. Oh, Was yeah. it over oh, yeah. his oh, bank? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right yeah, out to yeah. the silt fence again. No. It's outside the silt fence. Yeah. It's outside the silt fence. Yeah. 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 So, okay, I believe oh, it yeah. that came about about yeah, two yeah. weeks ago. Um, two weeks ago we yeah. had, so it's we had eight, eight inches of rain in about five days. It, exactly. Exactly. Okay, when we met at the last oh, meeting, usual. we had talked yeah. about really getting, I just went two days ago. At the intersection to get the... Do you want to give us an <coughs> update on how the clearing's coming up top? I've not been out there, so I can't. I can't speak to that. So I your, ba your base I, I've, I've been out there. It was it was so we're, we're up. quick. Okay. Very well. They cut off the street. This Bruce Street extension. Yeah. Okay. So the purpose of this hearing tonight, it's referencing lot seven and lot thirty. It just references everything all the time. So actually, I have to take those off because those were closed. Mm. So what are we seven seeking months. from the applicant tonight? 
besides awesome. besides data from months ago. I have no request to make this evening. No meaning us requesting of the applicant. I, I literally had it on the agenda because it's been the agenda for the last, I don't know, okay. 10 years. So. <laughs> Did you guys talk about the, the, um, the siltation at the outlet near Grimes Road? Was that Basin 2? Yeah. Yeah, because base, like basin two is is now the, the, the dirtiest erosion. basin. Yeah, um, and that was that was actually one of the first times I've seen it. Actually, it was discharging. It will cover. Um, there's a big like um, sedimentation. Yeah, there's a delta. Yeah, so that's there. turned. A couple deltas all and they're like coming, coming from up out up. of the basin oh, itself gosh. because that yeah. area has always been historically an issue with sedimentation, not from basin two, but from Grimes Road oh. itself. So I just want to make from sure it was directly from two. Okay. Yeah. So this yeah. is, Anna, and you'll remember this. So this was back quite some time ago during the flooding. Mm -hmm. We went out when it was discharging. They went and did a discovery and then kind of repacked it, put the hay bales on. It seemed to work mm -hmm. for the next few storms. Mm -hmm. But now it appears that we're back to where we were. It's bypassing the structure. Exactly. It's not Probably discharging it's getting the through. actual orifice. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. It's, I don't well, make sure yeah, it's because so, it's plugged. Yeah, so yeah but there's a, there's a but, but it, it, it was coming out the higher one. Mm -hmm. um, and it was coming out. Oh, there was flow. It was coming through. out the outlet, not under the uh, outlet. So it was it discharging may, through the structure and not bypassing the structure. Did you see it bypassing? Yeah, not bypassing the yeah, structure. Exactly. I meant bypassing the erosion control. They're starting to get under the silt fence, and there are, there's another silt fence on the other side of Grimes Road, so it's still it's a culvert. catching, but it's it there's quite a bit going through there. That's the first time I've noticed the um, like the delta view. Yeah, and I ran a Dave out there out of one of the times I was out there, um, and the Grimes Road itself is contributing to that, and there is erosion yep. off of Grimes through there. Yeah, so no, this it's, is the delta from. He's been trying to talk to yeah. Jim Clyde about what to, what to do what with to it. What to do, sure. Yeah, understood. Basin 3, can you tell us what's been done? <coughs> um, so I believe it was mucked out and a net import of material brought in and the under drain installed. I don't believe it's been loaned and seeded. And that happened right before uh, <coughs> you know, those big rain events. Yeah, the, the mm. sod was sitting there, but it hadn't been put in before all this rain came. So yeah, and they haven't done that yeah, yet, right? Yeah. yeah, I don't. So it's pending sod. Okay. So if it's flowing through properly, um, what is the source of the silt then? In Two different bases. It's not settling out. So it's not three, but the other two. two. Is it two? Yeah. Um, so it's not settling out properly before it's over overtopping. Mm -hmm. So where is that coming from? <coughs> the sediment would be coming off a of spruce. So, because um, that's the side of the site that's unstabilized. <coughs> so and it's a little bit like the point. It's really fine stuff. Yeah. So flocking? Is flocking necessary? We talked about that. Talked about actually, I talked about it over at uh, Cooper the other day too. Uh, <laughs> are they having problems as well? Uh, if we could ask, so if we could get a field report like within the 48 hours, and how to help mitigate because we've got rain coming in again midweek. Thought it was going to be tonight. I guess, well, no, but they're not there. So. <laughs> um, I did note that when I was out there last week to the start of the storms, there was no additional erosion um, controls put up ahead of the storm. Is there any specific areas that you were concerned about? That it uh, no, been? I mean, really anywhere where you're getting any of the runoff. So. Yeah, a lot, I think it's a lot too on, not Foster, Fraser. Yeah, this is a lot um, too on in here. Yeah, there's, there's there's a picture in there. What was Sorry, actually it, it was it was coming off dirty, but it was being diverted into the someone else's lawn, pretty much. But but for some reason I didn't try chasing it. The intersection was dirty, right? And I wasn't quite sure where it was coming from. I didn't. I was distracted by Basin Three. 
Um, so I know that our surveyors had staked out the septic system on lot two late last week. As soon as the septic system is installed, then it gets loaned and seeded and stabilized. I would say that we're at capacity for some of these, so are we going to have to entertain dewatering? Basin three has come down a fair bit. A fair bit. Did, okay. I'd, I'd say it's it's below the plugged pipe right when I saw it on Friday. Or I can't remember. Well, that's good news. Then the actual new soils are working. Yeah. Okay. That was the main reason I've been going out. Because before we never had mm -hmm. it was ne it would never it hadn't been tested. Yeah. yeah no, it did. Yeah. Okay. I noticed it go down. But I was there m last Monday, the 30th, and then Friday, and I, I also noticed yeah. Basin okay. 3 had gone, had that's gone good. down. That's good news. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so with that yeah, report, if we can look at that, so. and that mm -hmm. certainly can be an area to pursue if we do have to dewater. But I think flocking, because 2 was really our, was one of the better basins. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 2 was, yeah. was still up on Friday. I thought mm -hmm. three drained better than two. Three drained better than two? Three yeah. was down more than yeah. two was between yeah. Monday and Friday of last week. Which was well, could Basin yeah. 2 unexpected potentially in, in lieu of flocking also just be pumped across the field where Basin yeah. 3 had been pumped? Yeah. But that's what so that's got a huge we'd, run. Like, yeah. Yeah. we'd like to see that addressed. anything else no geo insight had had given me a call um, to see what your concerns were about the groundwater piece of things so they just haven't done their I guess second review I'd like to see out when we're when they're ready for us to do a site walk to actually see the location of the pipe and where that would go to cross over from farm pond mm -hmm. we can have that stake down so I mean, just throw some stakes or surveys so that way we can On both see sides, that and yeah. put some elevations in there <coughs> Are we still waiting for an analysis of the farm pond? Well, we requested at the last that. meeting again, um, more along the lines of geo and um, like doing yeah. test borings, which still haven't been done yet. So I think third party is going to require that anyways. Yeah. So to do the hydrogeological in terms of more soil testing. Yeah. Yeah. We, we've mentioned out the source. So right. We've mentioned that numerous well. times and. Oh, I think the third party would pick that up as well. Okay. okay. All right. So we look forward to a report um, and send that to Amy. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Russell Street. We still got seven minutes. I continue. <laughs> <laughs> continued public hearing. North Cemetery, 119 Russell Street. They can't. We're not. We're too early. Um, I can't believe it. Did, did you want to hear anything about the uh, conservation land sign prototype? Yes. Did you hear about that? Yeah. Yep. Yes. Sure. That that was just uh, um, Rick Finley has come up with a couple um, hanging signs. You know, up on one and out on an arm. Um, for some type so he got a prototype for Newtown Hill that they're hoping to put up um, and we were talking about whether or not uh, there could be some funding to get the prototype built for that and then for kiosks also mm -hmm. so that someone in the future can just say this is your prototype this is exactly what you measure this is how it's put together right. um, so I said I would at least mention to you he's gonna figure out how much it would cost and see if it might be amenable or not I believe Newtown Hill is an issue with the owner uh, Raffi, down at the sign? bottom. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's. They're trying to get it close to. There's a utility pole right there, but there's also rocks all over the place. It's going to be hard to find a place mm -hmm. to put it. <coughs> mm -hmm. Since you won't let you attach it to the utility pole. Yeah. <laughs> the sign looks great, though. I don't, uh, it's um, I think a, a darker green with some tan in it. It's it's really nice looking. I'll I'll see if maybe we can get a does, picture. Does does anybody <laughs> care about how these things look, the colors that are used, the prototype. I trust that. LCT is just running with it, so. That's fine. Typically, we do green or brown for our signs, so mm -hmm. it is fits that, in. Is that going to include the community garden as far as on the sign as well as Newtown Hill? 
this sign didn't, but maybe we could yeah. put like a little additional hanging sign, like a realtor I sign. Like, but I mean, yeah. you're just a community guy. Just keep guy adding to it. Keep adding it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's not a bad idea, though. It's not a bad idea. Yeah. yeah, I mean, as long as it's visible enough. It sounds like green and brown might blend into the background. That's, yeah. Like, um, it's a lot of trails, though, do. I mean, yeah. Well, and brown and yellow. What are other towns? Subtle. What are other towns used for signs? I mean, I read this. 300 towns in Massachusetts, they all have conservation. 300 different signs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was there any, any signs? Well, it, 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 actually, it actually first hit my radar when Bumblebee was done and the other one, because those were like different signs, different colors. And I was like, what? Any towns who's doing this? <laughs> Whatever paint is on sale. <laughs> Sometimes it's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Pink. <laughs> Did you want to talk about the regs at all? Yeah. Of the, We've got a I mean, five minute period. If, if, if you're going to do anything, yeah. it, it keeps getting kicked down the road because it's right. mm -hmm. difficult to talk about yeah. or painful. So you're certainly not going to decide anything tonight, but I don't know if you even want to do a subcommittee or something. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that would be a good idea. I think, of course, I forget now. I think you're allowed to do two people without posting it. I forget what yes. the people. Is. Yes, two people. Yeah. Three, actually. Oh, there you go. Ah. <laughs> you can't do three? Oh, is there any more than three, right? Okay. Yeah. Is, is it? Yeah, quorum. the terms of posted meeting. meeting. Any volunteers that want to work on that? I could help work I on would. it. I, I Anna did a great job. <laughs> I vote for her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She kept us in line. <laughs> she did. She I did. don't know. I felt She's a good slow. leader on regulations. <laughs> Well, maybe we can, we can sit down sometime even before the next meeting, like just come in half an hour early and yeah. go through it or, or pick a time. Pick a time, any time. Pick a time, any time. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <coughs> and we can also throw in, if you're really getting creative, the fees. Oh. Mm -hmm. I, looked, I looked at those last year and I had the spreadsheet and that, that just disappeared. You mean? Because they, uh, I mean, they're in the buy a lot. Um, Take them out of the bylaw and put them into the regulations. Well, there, there, there's that too, which is sort of administrative. But if you want more fees, yeah. oh, to increase, increase, increase the increase that she can't be there. No, no, she knows that. There, there's, there's a possible discussion about whether or not you. I gave you the old copy of, of the thing because it's mine. I didn't give you the new one. <laughs> <laughs> the new one says that there's a potential enforcement order. Um, so she's allowed there for that piece of it. And everybody get, gets kicked out for the executive. Correct. Uh, can we bring that up at this point? No. I'd stick with the, the timing. Yes. Yeah. But I think you're probably good enough for. No, maybe well, not. Wasn't he the? Oh, he's yeah. He's the engineer. Yeah. Dan actually made that clock is fast. Is it fast? Yeah. It is. Nice. <laughs> Amazingly, yes, we are. <laughs> We're actually like this much ahead of schedule. Yeah, it's like we have to wait. Yeah. Thank you. you well, then, I got two other things to bring up. There's a fallen tree on Long Lake, on that strip of Long Lake that everybody uses for their own personal docks. Mm -hmm. And you have something you have like private property signs on the town between property. Lakeshore, between Lakeshore and It's Lake? about a foot wide, a two foot wide strip. It's along um, Dogwood and oh, okay. so it's, it's not the beach piece of it, it's, it's the other piece of it. Oh, okay. And someone's complaining about the tree down. And, and yes, the tree is down. Um, like good it's a little bit in the lake. Yep. Sounds like great habitat. To that's me. exactly what I told Jim. How, how long has it been down? I think that's a really I, I think low just priority. Kind of just in the down. lake? Is the tree in the lake? On the shore. I think like the, the top over. half of it broke off. Hanging over. That's like the coolest place to go kayak near though, because you get like there's spider webs all over the place and mm -hmm. fish. Oh. I do have the spider webs on kayaking, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I was kidding about the spider web part. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the neighbors in there complained to Jim Clyde, and Jim Clyde was like, well, what do you want to do about it? Yeah. We're going to leave it. That, that's kind of what I said. It's true. Yeah. Once it drops, snacks. But that brings up the issue that I had when I first started here. It was like all these private uses. 
of the town land, the docks, okay. the parking areas, mm -hmm. boat storage. Did that has that ever been? Oh yes, it's been brought up. Okay, all right. Because when I when I walked uh, the conservation restriction on Prouty Woods, um, I can't remember the guy's name, but he said he thought there had been a big deal about it a while ago. There was, yeah. And apparently not. <coughs> <of it>, so. <laughs> well, the, there was a big deal of it, and and um, the Clean Lakes Committee and mm -hmm. Lake Association looked into the ownership of that strip first of all, because yeah. and they determined it was town land. And <laughs> <laughs> but then. <laughs> And you know the rules around it have never been started. Oh, sure. Yeah, I know. I think they got permission from Smadback or something. They got somehow the town finagled, to, so they ended up with the property. It's 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 town land. It's town yeah, land. but I mean they finally. It wasn't clear for quite mm -hmm. a while. Smadback in, in that trial, whatever. <coughs> the whatever. law the yeah. law firm. Determined yeah. It. I got one simple thing if anybody's interested. The uh, it's compliments of the town uh, businesses. I saw it's that. It's a mapping and it's got the town, the streets listed on it. Mm. If anybody wants to look at it, I would like this back. Uh, but I noticed that it doesn't have a Prouty on there. As, as no, a but it, has, so, it has the uh, streets, so if you're trying to find your way around town, especially when you get into unknown neighborhoods. Was it yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it isn't accurate for for um, conservation properties. No, it's just the street. the streets. Yeah, it's worth something in the kind of mm -hmm. Lake properties. Yeah, I think we should maybe get Good evening. Good evening. Hey guys, how are you doing? We're good to start. We're good to start. Okay. Let's go ahead and begin. We did receive your waiver. Um, Fifteen pages. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and open. Okay. I'd like to continue public hearing notice of intent one nineteen Russell Street. R18 2 0, Mass DEP file number 204 862, redevelopment of existing commercial property in the buffer zone. Even just do an update of what has occurred since we did Here's a bunch of copies of the waiver request they submitted. I've got a copy. Got it. Sure. Well, I was going to start with the fact that we had a site visit. Like since that time, um, I did file an amendment request with respect to the existing order of conditions on the eastern portion of the project or that separate lot. We filed both, I filed both an amendment request as well as an extension request because I understand that that order will run out in December yep. of this year and certainly not going to be completed or, or very far along by December so I also applied for an extension as well um, and that has been forwarded to DEP so DEP has a copy of that amendment request the plan and the extension request um, as you just stated I did provide you a written uh, waiver justification um, I do have to say, however, that you will see a lot of similar information in that um, from the request that David had forwarded earlier in the process. There was a, a waiver justification information that was previously provided. So I, I t went from there and added and, and structured the argument more in line with your actual regulations. So I'm happy to address that, give you the executive summary, um, discuss it, or if you'd prefer just to read it, um, comfortable with that as well. Um, what we'd like to do tonight, uh, again, talk about the waiver justification letter if you would like, but um, also going to have Brian give you a quick update on where we are with the stormwater uh, peer review status, because I know the Commission is certainly would be interested to know where we are with that and that ultimately it is deemed 
to be true that we are bringing the site into full conformance with state regulations. And also you had asked some questions about snow storage, and I know Brian is going to give you a little update on that. Um, what we are still working on, and which I alluded to in my waiver justification, is we are working on the wetland habitat enhancement plan. I know Dave is working on that. Yep. We've seen bits and pieces and drafts. The clients are reviewing it as well, but um, it is the detailed proposal with respect to uh, buffer enhancements and revegetations and just sort of uh, all of the proposed habitat and wetland enhancements that we're proposing as mitigation for the uh, work proposed. So with that, I'd just like to let Brian give you an update on the uh, stormwater and the snow storage. And uh, so I guess starting with snow storage, we had kind of discussed it very briefly um, during the site walk when we were walking around this area over here. And as you can see on the site, obviously with resources at the rear of the property and, and not at the front of the property, we have a 50-foot landscaped area that we're going to be using abutting the parking lot itself for snow storage. Um, and not unlike any other site within New England, if we have an excessive winter, uh, snow will be carted off site and disposed of according to any applicable regulations. And what we'll do is when we reissue the revised plans reflecting peer review and this, this commission's comments and the planning board comments, we'll make sure that all that's fully, uh, fully notated and, and shown. With respect to the peer review, um, we received it. Wasn't a whole lot to it in terms of wholesale changes to the site. Uh, just a lot of, of throwing down on some of the details, some of the calculations that we did. We're not fundamentally changing anything um, with our stormwater approach. The practices that we're using, uh, we're really just detailing it a little bit better to take some questions out of that. And we're anticipating releasing the next, uh, I should say, full set of revised plans and calculations this week. Um, so with any luck, we can have our second peer review comment, or lo lack thereof, comments by the next time we meet. And have that secured for the 20th. Okay. That's our goal. Um, another piece that was missing, we have this year's inspection report from Oxbow. Um, on the existing order of condition of the lot um, with the field. And we have two copies if you would like okay, to. Yeah, thank you. And I can follow you uh, up with PDFs as well tomorrow. Um, you know, the PDF that, I have. I got that directly it. from Oxbow. Okay, good. Um, with that said, that's kind of where we stand on the plan revisions and, and the items that we had discussed during the site walk itself. Okay. So let's just start to go back from the beginning so that we can address some of the, um, the extensions so we're not losing track of certain things that do need to get voted on. Um, so if we want to work on the extension of the uh, order of conditions, I know that we're going to, are we going to totally keep them separate in terms of hearings now? So that's going to be a separate hearing? I, I mean, you can open them at the same time, but I'm going to post them. As, okay. as two, two different file numbers. Two so while we recognize tonight that you have done that, right. we you won't take a vote on that. So we are that. going yep. to keep them apart. Mm -hmm. So that yeah. So I do have the eight fifty five. The is yeah. the the other the old piece, if you will. Okay. So we'll we'll table those two for now. Um, personally, I think that the commission would like to hear um, summary of the waiver points because that's sure. uh, most imperative. Mm -hmm. So essentially what I did is, uh, it, it, you know, from my perspective, the simplest way to put something like this in writing is to just follow the outline of the regulations. Um, I mean, you, you're all well aware of the fact that you have a regulation that prohibits work. However, there is an expressed uh, section 4.2 which provides for a waiver, provided you um, <clears throat> You, prove, you show that the, you meet the criteria and the standard of view, review that's clearly outlined in that um, uh, waiver section. 
And there are three, essentially, as I see it, there were three um, main components of the waiver justification or the, the waiver requirements. One is that the, the proposed work or the, the actions must be in the public interest, um, necessary to avoid a taking, necessary to prevent a safety hazard, or water dependent. I, I think maybe there's a typo there. Um, but in our, in our situation, uh, we're not talking about avoiding a taking, preventing a safety habit, or any water dependence issues. Um, we, I looked clearly at and I analyzed whether what we're proposing to do is in uh, the public's interest. And interestingly, the bylaw doesn't give us a lot of direction as to what constitutes public interest, but I thought I could maybe figure that out. Um, I see it that there are two areas of public interest, probably one certainly more um, of a concern to the Commission. But when you talk about public interest, I think you have to consider um, the the qualitative financial aspects of public interest. And as we've pointed out, uh, Workers' Credit Union intends to invest millions of dollars, tens of millions <coughs> of dollars in uh, redeveloping this site. As you know, the site is in disrepair. It's empty, uh, and some would argue unsightly. Um, so the proposed improvement here will not only dramatically increase the and improve the aesthetics of the neighborhood by making this a nicer building, a nicer site, uh, but it'll also have a direct and significant uh, impact on the tax value of the property and, and so the values, the tax um, revenues for the town will, will be increased significantly. Um, also as we've discussed, uh, this site will bring uh, hundreds of new jobs to the area. Uh, and so I, I look at that as, as, as one aspect of the public benefit, and that is what this will do for the town in terms of tax revenue, aesthetic values to the neighborhood, and things like that. Uh, there are also some other qualitative public benefits that I think are worth mentioning. Um, this project is in keeping with the town's master plan to redevelop and, and improve underutilized and certainly undertaxed properties. Um, uh, it, it's going to attract a new corporate citizen in, in Workers' Credit Union, which is an outstanding add to the town. Um, a corporate client like Workers will provide uh, employees that will not only work here, but they're going to patronize your other businesses in the area. They're going to utilize the services and the things available at the point. Um, so what you're going to see is a cross utilization of services and employees. Um, so this new project is going to become an integral part of the town's uh, commercial development and master plan in that regard. So those are sort of the public benefits from a financial qualitative aspect. But your bylaw doesn't limit public benefits to just uh, wetland related public benefits. So I think it's important to realize that this this project, the proposed work, does have significant increase in public benefits in that regard. However, the more important public benefit that I know the Commission wants to consider is what this does from a resource area protection standpoint. You know, is there a public benefit directly tied to wetlands and resource areas protection from this proposed work? And it should come as no surprise that I'm going to argue that there is a significant public benefit in terms of resource area protection and improvements. Um, as we've talked about, there is proposed some building addition here, and we've talked about some tree cutting and some vista pruning. Those are really, from my standpoint, the, the work and, you know, the fact that they violate your 50-foot no disturb, in, in essence, is not a benefit, but a detriment. However, uh, as we've talked about, I've laid it out in my MMO, I know Dave laid it out in his, and we talked a little bit at your last meeting. Um, we are proposing extensive wetland and wildlife habitat enhancements here through the cleaning of uh, debris and sediment over on the 495 side, uh, the planting of native species, the treatment of invasive species, the redevelopment, renaturalization of a buffer zone along the, the resource area here. 
We have now, as was discussed at the last meeting, and we're working on a second tier buffer enhancement so that we would have a, um, not only a larger buffer, but a sort of a transitional buffer between the proposed manicured lawn and the ultimate renaturalized buffer. So, um, you know, we're, we're putting that plan together now, but I will tell you it is an extensive um, plan. Um, we are also proposing to replace uh, the trees that we are, are requesting to disturb. Um, I, I have here that it, we were proposing a four to one ratio, but in starting to see the proposed planting plan, it's hard to say just how many more trees and shrubs we're adding. It is significantly more than a four to one ratio, but we are proposing to replace um, anything we cut uh, multiple times over. In the same place or? Uh, yes, the, the trees out across we're proposing to replant and and then of course the the vast majority of the replanting and the revegetation is along this what is currently now the mowed lawn between the building and the thing. So some over here where we're cutting and then the rest will be all in this area. And you're planting the trees where they won't grow up again where you'd have to cut them again, right? You plant shrubs. Well, I think, <laughs> I think we're proposing they... species shrubs. that aren't going to no, grow to 70 trees. feet. Okay. You know, uh, yes. Shorter trees. But shorter trees. Okay. But trees uh, as opposed, and shrubs, but, but okay. not exclusively shrubs, no. Okay. Um, <clears throat> So when we talk about public benefit, I, you know, there is some minor detriment, I, you know, in the fact that we have no choice but to work within your 50. But on balance, um, when we're done here, I think the resource areas are going to be far better protected. They are going to be enhanced themselves through the the eradication of um, of the. Um, uh, the species we don't want there and the planting of the species we do. So on balance, I think there's a huge public benefit here from the wetlands perspective that we're going to make things significantly better than they are today. So public benefit, the second um, um, area of uh, requirements under your criteria is that the proposed work within the no disturb area is consistent with the intent and purpose of the bylaw. And that was probably the easiest of the three prongs to consider because your bylaw, both the bylaw and the regulations supporting the bylaw, have the same purpose and intent. And quite frankly, it's to protect the wetland and water resources of the town of Littleton by regulating activity in or near wetland resource areas. Um, there is no question here that there's a significant amount of regulation. Um, we're asking you to allow us to do. Uh, this work, not only the work in, in building and in cutting, but all of this work in restoring and mitigating. Um, as I sort of just argued, um, we believe that this area will be in better shape post-development than it is today. Uh, and if that is true, then we are certainly meeting the criteria that uh, we're in, um, consistent with the intent and purpose which is to protect wetlands and water resource areas. I mean, I, I don't want, know what more to say. I, we, we are adamant in our position that when we're done, this will be better than it is today, and it'll be more protective, and the wetlands will be healthier and stronger and better able to do what they're supposed to do. And that is the purpose and intent of your bylaw. So right. I believe we are consistent in that regard. The last prong is probably sort of the most difficult prong to analyze, or at least was for me, and that is when talking about that <clears throat> is the work you're proposing the least environmentally damaging practicable alternative? And of course you can appreciate I have to hang my hat on practical alternative because certainly doing nothing, one could argue, is less environmentally damaging, although I wouldn't argue that because I think if we don't fix this, if we don't eradicate the species that we don't want here, we don't recreate these buffers, I think that's environmentally damaging not to do anything but to leave it the way it is and allow it to continue to, um, you know, get worse in terms of this, the uh, invasive species. However, um, when I looked at this um, in terms of the least environmentally damaging practical alternative, 
I was reminded of the fact that there are two critical aspects of this project that are really driving why workers wants to be here. One is that this site allows them to build a building that will be custom tailored to what it sees its needs to be for the next 20 years, 20, 30 years, whatever. This is going to be their new headquarters. And if they're going to make that move and they're going to spend all this money, they have to make sure that it's being built so that it will physically support their growth and what they need to accomplish within this building. Um, it was clear it had to be made bigger. The 44,000 square feet wasn't enough. Um, from a design standpoint, the interior, the layout, the way the roofs didn't really lend itself to the type of space they need and the sort of design of what they need. So this building needs to be reconfigured. How do you add on to a building that is, you know, placed where it is? We, we knew we, we had to avoid building to the back to the best that we could because that's the most critical area. The side is not much better when you consider that this is all paving. There's really no area to build here. We've got zoning and setback requirements that we're already sort of um, debating <laughs> with the planning board because you're supposed to be 150 feet back from the road. So the only logical place where we could add without being directly, you know, without directly impacting resource areas or violating zoning was to this end. So you can see we have proposed to put the vast majority off of this end. But in order to make it work architecturally and structurally and, and from an efficiency standpoint inside, you can see we have these wings and we squared the building off here. Um, you know, the planning board asked us why we had to do this, that way we wouldn't be encroaching. But they did appreciate the fact that we had to put these pieces to square it off and to get the architectural second story that, that you see. Same is true for this little piece back here. If we just cut it here, it, the interior of the building wouldn't flow right, the design wouldn't work. So the second big consideration for workers, in addition to the fact that this building allowed them to redesign and build it to what they need, was the visibility of this building to 495. It's probably could be the single most critical uh, factor for making this site attractive to the credit union for its headquarters. It needed to be visible from 495. We have reasonable and acceptable visibility from one section, but as you know, the only way we can get visibility from the other section is the cutting of those trees. So they are the, how do I say this? They are the only practicable alternative from their perspective is that the building needs to be redesigned and we need visibility. Is it the most, the <coughs> least environmentally damaging practicable alternative? In order to achieve those two things, the building and the sign, it is. It, it is the only <laughs> uh, practical alternative. And I'm going to go back to my original argument. I don't believe that it's environmentally damaging. On balance, it's going to improve things. So, you know, in a perfect world, you just make improvements that improve, you know, the environment, protect the wetlands, do all of that. But in our case, there were some things we had to do that wouldn't fall into that category. So in return, we are mitigating that by going overboard the other way. So, I, I, I'm going to argue that I don't think this alternative is environmentally damaging. It isn't. It, it's environmentally enhancing and making better, given that it's our only practicable alternative in terms of the building design and the sign. It, it makes it the most least environmentally damaging practical alternative for us. Um, Workers has really gone out of its way here to. In, in, in achieving what it has to achieve from a business perspective in terms of the building enlargement and the sign. Starting at that baseline, they've done everything that they can think of and everything that's reasonable 
to make this better, to make the wetlands and protect them. So I think if there is a basis for a waiver, this is a, a um, an excellent example of where one should be allowed. And I think part of the strength of the redevelopment is the stormwater quality Huge. of what's there. I mean, the, the discharge. <clears throat> so I think we, we look at what the discharge is there and, and hoping um, that with that it will be a, a stronger site for sure. And I also appreciate the lessening of impervious surface. I think that that, it, you know, <clears throat> Balances the expansion of the building, yeah, to take yeah. away the parking, um, and actually overall reducing the footages is a good thing. Right. Is the water going to be clean or leave in the site than it has been? Currently, yeah. I, currently yeah, I don't we, think it can get any dirtier. <laughs> it's like direct right because now. Because that's yeah. going to end yeah. up over by the well. It's yeah. going to be drinkable. Yeah. Yes, but I'm just saying it's going to be. <laughs> well, currently there is. Can I have that Brian? Is it, there is no, <laughs> there's, there's no stormwater there treatment right on the site at all. And we're not using it right now, but there is none. It's collected and just. Yeah. Right. The pipes are in the wetland. We're going to bring the site up to yeah. full <clears throat> compliance with Mass DEP, you know, stormwater guidelines. So it will be fully treated before it's discharged. Okay. Um, what alternatives did you look at for the sign besides the sign with the trees cutting and no sign? Like, I feel like there's some ground between there. What did, what, what did you look at? Well, um, so we're looking at the three big trees for the, for the sign and then some others that are not, not well um, that need to come down yeah. as well. So when you're, you're looking at that, that's the key point for you is those, those three major trees and then a few um, other ones that are surrounding it, correct? But, but working from the parameter that, you know, the goal here is to have a sign on the building. Yeah. Um, okay, so on the building. So that's has, Yeah, we that couldn't put, I mean, can. if we were to put a standalone sign, mm -hmm. I mean, you'd literally be almost talking kind of billboardish kind of mm -hmm. thing. Right. And yeah. You yeah. didn't think, not only that, but... Now you find where do you put the pole? Like where do you put the right. structure? Yeah. You know the fact that building actually gives us mm -hmm. the, the yeah. structure. No, it's important to understand. Um, and you then like, you like the Dunkin' Donuts sign on Route Two, yeah. Route yeah. Twelve. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and so what we did is we said, okay, given where the road is, given the view sheds, given the trees, if we put the building on the the sign on the building, <laughs> why don't I? Somebody said today said to me, well, why don't you just put the thing on a giant you know, t structure on the top of the building, then the, the sign would be so high up that everyone could see it from everywhere. <laughs> that actually would be great, except, I mean, I think at that point, I mean, we also want it to be tasteful, sort of, you know, yeah, so you see the building the and there's the sign. You know, if we just had this, so we, we looked at where could we place it? Where was the, 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 the place meant on the building that we could get the most view shed with the minimal trimming. And actually, it was studies, right? They, there were people that go out and measure line of sight yeah. up and down the road. I've been road, looking at every time I go through there, like looking yeah, at the they, angles now. So the, the scientists did their job and basically said, look, if you put it here, you have good visibility from one way, and you can get away with a minimal of, of cutting the other way. And there's nowhere else to put it to, to do no cutting and still have it visible you stop the moving direction. there's no place where it's visible in fact I think where it is now is where it's the most visible with the least cutting okay is that on your is that just on um, the corner is that depicted on the picture on there? Okay. Okay. Yeah, so the issue is really the northbound yeah or the southbound um, you can move, but there's yeah, no southbound. northbound mm -hmm. visibility today okay Would, would those trees be used potentially be used by raptors? Are they currently being used by raptors? There, there, there are a few snag trees, and, and um, you know, al although we we don't have the um, enhancement plan drafted uh, for submittal at this point. I mean, we're we're at the 70, 80 percent point where all the core elements that we've discussed about. Uh, there's really three core elements: um, invasive species removal and treatment, um, native species plantings and wildlife uh, enhancements. Um, 
Raptors, especially red tailed hawks, will readily use. Yeah. Uh, you'll see them on highways oh, all yeah. the time. Uh, yeah, that's they're, yeah, that's they're especially surrounded by a field. Proposed like, rear, right, right. They'll, rear they'll usually hunt in the medians, or yeah. they'll pick up roadkill, which is just a free meal for them. Yeah. Um, so the, there is one existing Linux, dead snag in there. One of the one of the elements was that if we were to move three of the trees, is maybe one of the trees we could cut at a height of, of maybe 12, uh, 15 feet. Um, and, and leave the, the core trunk of that mm -hmm. to remain a snag habitat. Oh, yeah. And either if raptors could perch on it, it would decay and become um, woodpecker yeah. habitat. There's several yeah. woodpeckers that will feed on that. Mm -hmm. Cavity nesters. Although it is, I mean, it's difficult with the noise and light disruption of the, the yeah. highway, but species like even uh, eastern flying squirrels or uh, eastern screech owls are cavity nesters that, that are oh, yeah. unforeseen. Uh, so this is the view shed of the building from the rear. So essentially, looking from 495 across the, you know, that's and this is the front, front of the building. Right. So it's the exact opposite. Yeah. Drive. So you can see we've kind of tucked it into this into this building. element right here. Mm -hmm. um, to place it up here on a separate, I mean, it would just look. Yeah, aesthetically. It would, it would, it would be a little obnoxious. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the planning board has been, yeah. you know, no, one of the biggest discussions with the planning board is how to light this in such yeah. a way that we don't create and light pollution. Yeah. Right. So, you know, it's not an internally lit mm -hmm. sign, it's an externally okay. lit. We had proposed up lighting. The planning board has asked us to look at down. Yeah, that down would be better, yeah. So we're doing that. But we did kind of try to integrate it. I mean, it's funny. You want it to be visible and stand out. But you don't want it to be obnoxious, right? You want it to look nice with the design. And I think we've done a very nice job of integrating it into the building so it wouldn't mm -hmm. look too out of place. <coughs> but we do want it to be seen. So your timing, you say you're at like 75 80%? Yeah, essentially, most of the elements are there. Right now, um, I'm in coordination with the applicants in terms of um, uh, species selection, uh, density, and location, um, and, and uh, working with them to find something that jointly um, meets their their analysis for view shed and ecological um, restoration that the Conservation Commission would approve. Okay. So. so I know that one question or one comment that a lot of us had on that site walk were some of the mature trees, which were not high trees, that were... Um, well, in, yeah. in this area, and the question was, why were all of them being taken out? So we, and um, I think those were some of the alternatives that we were looking for. Yeah. So we're um, looking at that right now, and we've already identified at least two that we don't think um, necessarily have to come down. So, okay. so at some point, if you can flag all the trees that you're asking to remove, with the exception of the very large ones, yeah. out, um, I think it some of the commissioners might like to be able to go and see that because I think that was in, in question on that on that day. Wait, the flag shows the, the, the plan as well. Stay or, or yeah. leave? The, 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 the ones to be removed. The ones to be removed are the ones that are being flagged. Okay. Yep. So, okay. Um, we would expect to have, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we expect to have that plan done in advance of your meeting, your next meeting next as well. Meeting. So yeah, we're, we're, we're on the home stretch of it. We have the, the, the core elements are, are drafted. Um, as I said, we're working with the applicant now just okay. in terms of appropriate species. So as a note of record, we meet on the 20th, but you want to have it to us really the Wednesday before. Okay. Amy works on Thursday, like so if yep. we get it on yeah. Friday or Monday, it won't be reviewed. Right. Okay. Right. So you want so. it the 13th. So, so what is the square like footage within the 50? Sure, I can give you that. I have that in detail in my memo. Um, what was your question, Carl? What is the square footage within the 50? Oh, yeah. We have, uh, I don't have the smell. I don't. I have it. Yeah. Okay, so the proposed, uh, the proposed work that's inside the 50, um, okay, I know I have it here. Hold on. Here we go. Um, there's currently eight, just over 8,000 square feet of impervious surfaces within the 50-foot no disturb area. That includes uh, existing building footprint of about 900 square feet 
is in the 50 currently. And then there's uh, paved parking just over 7,200 7, square feet. So under the proposed work, we're looking to add just over 2,000 square feet of building here. Mm -hmm. And to cut those three trees. And then what we're removing is 6,000 square feet of pavement, mm -hmm. which is a, mostly all of this in Almost here. Almost 7,000. And then on the other side, yeah, too. Yeah, and, and then this pavement, we're proposing to pull out the great. pavement and put in yeah. pervious like materials. So, so net, net, I said we are, uh, there's a net reduction in impervious service of 7,000 square feet. Right. So that's going, including going, putting the building in and taking out. Mm -hmm. It's going from about 8,000 down to 1,000 mm -hmm. in the 50 foot. No, uh, no, no. As a net reduction of 7,000? Well, it's a net reduction of 7,000 because we're removing 6,000 and we're converting 3,000 from pervious to impervious. So mm -hmm. really is 9,000 square feet of impervious being removed, but we're putting 2,000 square foot of building. So the net is 7,000 reduced. Mm -hmm. so we're reducing nine, adding two. Well, you net, said, net of seven. Yeah. You said there's 8,000 square feet in there now, reducing it by 7,000 with a mix. Right. So there's 8,000 impervious it's, now in the 50 foot. There will be 1,000. It's, it's, it's going to be moved around. It's but. higher than that. Yeah, it's, it's because of the 8,000 that's currently there. Oh, paved, and then, then there's the disturbance. It's made up of building yeah. footprint and paving. It's like 5,900 right. change in paving. We're removing 5,900 of pavement. We're converting 3,000 from per impervious to pervious. Mm -hmm. So that's a plus, a reduction of uh, 9,000 square feet. But then we're adding 2,000 in. Uh, 7,000 reduction is yeah. what it comes down There's to. There's only 8,000 you can't take out 9,000. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's coming back. You don't know if you compare the previous to the end paved. Is that what? They're actually pulling the car parking. Yeah, out. see, this is all yeah, paved all right coming, now. And it's coming out. That's, we're taking it out yeah. and, and making that, you know, grass or buffer. And then changing buffer. where the green is. This attached. dark green is currently pavement. We're taking it out and putting it in pervious pervious surface, mm -hmm. yeah, and then we're adding this little, well, I say yeah. it's little, but it's about 2,000 <laughs> square feet right here. Mm -hmm. All right, so. And then this is all that's being re, you know, um, revegetated, naturalized, buffer zone right. development. Okay. Is um, the loading dock, is there any room to, I don't, I don't generally like loading docks that are pervious because that's where you get. And I and I realize I asked this question last time, and Brian was helpful. Um, you know, so I I understand it's going to be mostly like UPS trucks and things of that nature, but bigger trucks that get used day to day do tend to drip, and so it it's just a comment at this point. Yep. I'm, I'm just not, I, I visit a lot of industrial commercial facilities and the loading dock always has, it, it's just kind of a comment at this point. Well, luckily, the, at least the, what's being delivered there, um, yeah, is it she's heating oil? It's still a truck. She's, she's talking about it's still the truck the trucks. Yeah, just yep. like UPS. So no, I understand, but, and I know about loading docks too, but I'm just wondering, yeah. um, are, are you, what are you going to be delivering in general there? Is it? Uh, it's not are anticipated you? to be used outside of the initial move-in of furniture and whatnot in the building. If you think about an office delivery, they're pulling up to the front door and using the elevator. Right. They're not even going to be using the loading dock. Yeah. So realistically, it's kind of the back end of the building that's it's there. We're not going to remove it. And we just identified it as an opportunity to introduce some pervious areas, especially in a low traffic area for this specific use and this tenant. That can be conditioned to monitor. So when you yeah, say or like the tenant changes. Pervious pavement. So it's a yep. geo block. Yeah, it's a yeah. pervious geo block. Press 
Presto geo Systems, box. yeah, Presto Systems makes a, a GeoGrid. If you look at like Grass Pave, it's a rolled yeah, yeah, plastic application. Yeah. This that, isn't that's rolled what you're plastic. Talking about. Yeah, it's um, they come in panels and they actually snap together. You staple yeah. them into uh, a sandy media, and then uh, the grass grows up. Right. Through it. So that can so. be a point where you can monitor it for a series of years, uh, ownership changes or whether it may not be suitable yeah. there. You can always come back to to mend that as well. well yeah. So, well, if the commission feels, I mean, what we were looking for were opportunities to reduce impervious. Correct. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. But and we appreciate that. And, and, and if mm -hmm. you know, if we had more opportunities, we would. You can imagine that's a costly mm -hmm. exercise um, and you know I, I guess that never really dawned on me uh, you know that where well, you can have a truck park there is it is the, the paving I mean is there a, is there a, is another there opportunity or, or another uh, type of material that you know sort of they'd have to redo their numbers is not keeping it paved but maybe not as porous as you know is there or is it a big problem for the stormwater? I mean, I mean it's just, something, just look at the numbers. See if yeah, it's a it's big deal. Yeah, we can certainly look at. And I think it's a good alternative. Look at it. We recognize you have to rerun, rerun those numbers. Yeah, but um, yeah, I'm confident we'll still have net net increase. Yeah, I mean, purpose, it's but it may sure. reduce it's a it by small a area. Yeah, right. yeah okay. just to ensure that. Yeah, yeah, it's a small area, it's but it just area. from a just going forward yeah, environmental yeah. standpoint, and so if it's costly. So, so I, I, I think you're, you're definitely uh, going down the right <coughs> path here. Um, I think it, it's really going to come down to, in my mind, uh, it's coming down to mitigation. Yeah. And Which we should know better in the next. Right. Yeah. Well, you're going to see this I mean, plan. Yeah, it's yeah, extensive. It, it had been my intent to have it for, for this hearing, but we're, again, we're just working out some of the. the so we've got to keep going, minutes. though. So we're going to go ahead and extend. To November 20th, with the understanding we'd like the data. By the 13th. Like, really, that was by the Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Did you do an invasive plant survey? Because that would be. I oh, did, yeah. yeah. Did That's um, the, some of the most prevalent areas, uh, especially over that here where the trees plenty. are being taken. Um, Oriental bittersweet isn't particularly prevalent over there. Mm -hmm. And if you're familiar with Oriental bittersweet, it's a vine. Um, yep. And in the earlier stages, it's, in the earlier stages, it's 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 you know I mean small diameter vines climbing mm -hmm. the trees. There's actually some that are you know the the yeah. girth yeah. of those things yeah. are two inches. Yeah. Actually, and I'm not an arborist, but just yeah. looking at the general health of the trees that are being strangled yeah. by there, I think there would be a great <laughs> benefit to, to orient that stuff's tree. nasty. We've got to move on. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, that, I do like I do like your idea be. of because uh, that's part, in my mind yep. that's. So hopefully medication. that will be addressed right. in right. his report. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I just yeah. want to like yeah, since we're going to talk about it next time, oh, it would be something yeah. that I'd be asking for next time. That's yep. all. Yep. I didn't mean to start. Oh no, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, thank That's, you. I yeah. appreciate your time. Information. You. Right. So now right. we're. Do you want to talk about the the other end of it, or we have to request for an amended order of conditions for Rust Street. Right. So we have to close that one and now open the next. That's what we're doing. So, yep. Uh, Mass DEP file number dash 204-746. And this is for an amended order of conditions for Russell Street. And an extension. And, and extension. And extension. And extension. So two separate votes. Well, it doesn't say that here. That's why I'm... No, I know. So... And an extension for the uh, order of conditions. So we're going to go out one year? And what are we going to do? Three. They asked for three. Go for three. That way, we, assuming three. we get an order for the other side, they'll be running parallel. Okay. okay. I'd like to motion that we extend um, the order of conditions for three years. The amended, the amended <coughs> one. We haven't amended it yet. <laughs> so the existing it's order. Two, the existing order. Of the existing so order. Have we looked at those order of conditions to see if there's anything we want to add to that, though? Um. The only uh, true specials that were in there before, like the dumpsters being covered during construction, yeah, it was um, added. Oh, I, I highlighted snow storage or stockpiling because that hadn't been addressed in the old orders, and I'm not sure if there's anything on there, but that would be in the plans. Um, the herbicide piece of things. I, I'm inclined to look at that order of conditions. When does that expire? January. 
fifth. Okay. Can we time. can we move the order of conditions extension, which will probably be fine, but I'd like to look at the wording mm -hmm. on that because we've made changes sense. Sense. Yeah, no, yep. to some. Um, so um, if, if we can, I'm happy to look at that. Sure. Um, to hold that to November 20th, but to go ahead, we do need to do the amendment um, now. So we don't have plans or separate plans. <laughs> was November 20th? You. I, I need a state alone set of plans because right now it's it's all merged together. Our revision date is going to be reflected. On the next issuance. Okay, so we'll okay. have to wait. So we'll get the revised okay. plan. Okay. So and would that include the sign down at the corner? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we really need to do that. Um, yeah. So let's just carry those on to the 20th. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. As, as a matter of administrative process, too, um, I looked at the uh, the regs for admitted uh, order conditions, and DP does require uh, public notification. Yeah, so we'll definitely. have that circulated as well, and we'll have uh, green green slips. Uh, okay. Green slips next time. Although I, it's it's kind of your discretion, I would consider that have already been noticed. Okay. As part of the yeah. as, as part of the notice. Part of the intent. previous. Okay. So I mean, mm -hmm. it's at your discretion. If you think it's worth a whole separate. Yeah, they were out there. It, it's, it was it's already part there, of the package. Was. It just got separated. Out it was yeah. The butters, the certified, the, the certified at butters list did include both parcels. Yes. When we yeah. I think it's considered okay. noticed. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Okay. okay. Thank, thank you, Everything okay. by the book. Yep. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Right. Your time. Wait. It's just such Carl, a pleasure to have the point back. You were here last time. A month ago, you weren't. Uh, okay. There's a couple copies on that. Ready, go. It's fixed. <laughs> <laughs> we good? Uh, you're funny. All right, just, just review what, just back up and review. Um, we had a contractor that wanted to do some riprap over at the end of Building C. He cut through what he didn't realize was a wetland area. Sorry, remind me what Building C is again. I'm sorry, the tavern, uh, Emerson Urgent Care, the tavern oh, okay. near Tidal Boxing. Okay, so it's pretty far up. Yeah, up near. One um, tier less than the O'Neill. Yes. Are these other your photos? The last To page. the other um, Those are Steve Ivis's photos. Tavern, okay. So referencing those? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So he uh, disturbed some areas that he was under the oh, impression yeah. were not uh, off limits. So Steve Ivis was with, set up a, a program to go back in. They dug out, or when they went in there, they sunk, thinking they were doing the right thing. They filled in the trenches and compacted it nicely. Um, Steve Ivis had them go in and monitored them. They, they dug out what had been compacted put in some uh, fluffier material without compaction and put in a wetland seed and a winter rye, the wetland seed to winter over. When did that get seeded? Uh, Before the rains? Yes. Yes. Is it up? They, sorry? Is it up? Is it Germany? growing? I didn't notice it yet, but I think it should with this warm like weather. mid last week and it wasn't up yet. Yeah, yes. last week it wasn't, but I yeah. haven't checked it since we had this little bit of warm weather. It, was it hay or something to stabilize it? So that we'll section through the middle um, in the picture you can see they put um, jute mesh down and then oh, okay. between right. outside of the wetland area between the retaining wall and the sill fence they uh, put straw. Okay. And that's held up well? So the jute mesh has held up. The jute mesh has held up very well. The hay outside of the wetland area has a about a foot wide rivulet that got washed out during these last uh, two rainstorms back to back. Hmm. What else has happened? Anything with the water? In there? Anywhere on the site? No, we're doing pretty good. Basin three is a little full. It's being recycled. It's being flocked. It is actually. Actually, it's finally clear. It's finally clear today. Uh, yeah, okay. so it's, yeah, was I was going to pump it, but they were predicting rain. I didn't want to start it, but it didn't really rain as much as yeah. they said. So tomorrow, I'll probably start pumping it out. They haven't got through the night yet. Yeah, I know. That's why I figured wait <laughs> till tomorrow to put the discharge hose on. So, but it has finally cleared up. Uh, so the big issue back up there is the exposed <laughs> hill. 
<laughs> the exposed hill, um, actually, I had a meeting this morning. That hill is being, I don't know if anybody's been up there in the last couple of days, that hill's being cut to its final grade from about midpoint up. I don't know if you remember, there was a kind of a scar mm -hmm. in the middle of the hill. That's because it got, re, it got reshaped. Mm -hmm. So that whole section by probably the end of the week will be cut. They'll tackify it and seed it next week. And well, even if it's not growing, it'll have, because yeah, we did do the tackifier a couple of years ago and it worked out pretty yeah. well. What's that gonna be seeded with? Uh, for now, it'll be seeded with a winter rye, and yeah. if it doesn't take, we'll, we'll go back and spray it again in the springtime. What's, what's the final seeding going to be? I don't think we have a... Because uh, that's going to get disturbed again. No, that's, this is... That one won't? That one, so be no, that'll be it. It'll be, it'll be undisturbed from about midpoint up. There is a shelf because there's excess material we still have to truck out, but the upper part... Um, We've decided to get it. Still have to truck down. Cars still down have to the truck road. down. Cars. Is that going to be something that you don't have to mow? Or how yes. Are you planning yes. On doing yeah, no, it's, it'll be. Uh, it's a two to one. Slope. I thought That'll the dozer be. was going to fall off it. <laughs> my, yeah, I think the guy riding it's not too heavy. Six year old. It's going to be critical. Well, everything that's been seated there so far yeah. has taken very well. Um, mm -hmm. We had a couple. Before everything took off, we had a couple of spots that did a little slump, but we repaired them and nothing slumped since. It's veget it's gonna be vegetated. Grass are done all in. So where we're gonna be I just wonder if there's something we could vegetate with that would actually help wildlife in some form or fashion. Oh, the turkey oh, wildlife got, specialist the for the site happy to find yeah. something. All, we got turkey all, and all deer potentially habitat winter cover potentially. We could. That whole area yeah. is full of clover right now. Do you love it? Mm -hmm. Actually it's the all uh, autumn miles up there. I mean it's a yeah. big area, it's worth yeah. If you get a chance, yeah, just to think about that. Mm. Um, Amy and I were just talking where you're going to be There's running the trucks all area. over again. Is there going to be a tracking yeah. area? There like will be. Clean? I have no idea when we're going to run trucks again. It I could be this spring. It could be a year from now. I, oh, okay. It's not. It's not limited. Be hauling. Not. It's anybody's guess. Okay. I have a couple of projects that are interested in the material. They've stalled. Okay. Otherwise, I would have had it trucked out by now. So I don't know when it's going to happen. Okay. But when it does happen, there will be a tracking pad, yep. and they will have to be going out from um, more than likely behind the cinema. They won't be coming straight down Constitution Ave. Oh, okay. Cool. Anybody have any questions? Nope. Oh, my happiest moment will be when Basin 3 gets cleaned out. And Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, just to actually give you a little heads up, uh, because we mentioned last time it rained, the water came down, built up behind the curb, and then flowed, and that's why Basin right. 3 got dirty. Once Conley finishes grading that, and the cinema can get all this staging and everything out of the area where my trailer was, right. um, that green fence that's there now will be continued over to the cinema, basically like a sidewalk's width behind the side, behind the curb, yep. and there'll be a earthen berm built behind there to keep anything from running and coming up mm -hmm. over the sidewalk and What's down the What's the time for that? I hope to be before the end of November. Okay, so it won't be frozen. Okay. Yeah. No, it won't be. It won't. Hopefully, yeah. if it stays like this, it won't be. I'm just waiting for the cinema to get out of the way because they're okay. dragging everything out. Yeah. How long before they're finished? They're supposed to. Well, and before they're the finished. 17th. Yeah, yeah, I was just saying before they open before they're, right? they're finished. Before, <laughs> before the site work is done, um, like the outside completely done. Their actual site work is only about five feet wider than their building, but the problem is where they have their trails and everything is holding up right. me grading yeah. the area next to them, which is the problem. Move the toys I first. Because yeah. mm -hmm. so. that's where all the silt was coming Yeah, exactly. Out. Yeah, once the trail, their trailers are, their trailers were in the parking lot, but in order to pave the parking lot, they moved everything there. Now it's in my way, so once that's gone, that'll get graveled and loomed, and that's where the berm will go to hold any okay. possible runoff back. Cool. Now that he's cutting that slope, though, that'll help because where the scar was before it was a muddy waterfall that was coming right down. What's left for construction out there? Full build out. There's still the possibility of a couple more buildings. A couple in the back? Yeah. Huh. And a conservation restriction. Yes. All right. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Did, did we ever talk about that path that. That's. Is that on the. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs>
informal discussion like via what? Webster, Buckley we Road. People that know, like in terms of doing that. Good evening. Good evening, good people of the Conservation Commission. Is somebody walking? <laughs> and Carl. <laughs> and Carl. <laughs> nice. Uh -oh. Straight down. <laughs> nice. Uh, good to be with you again. Uh, my goal, hope, and dream is that I can honor and uphold your commission for this town and in so doing help out my mother, owner of 25 Balti Road. So when we were last here, I was asked to get all of the survey done. So this exists in your records from when the land was subdivided anyways, but I went ahead and got it for you so it can pass around whatever you want. But the piece we're talking about is, yes, 4.36 acres, but it's almost entirely swamp, save for this tiny little Dorito up in the corner here, which will clearly not support a home and a primary reserve septic. This is why I'm before you, to say your own rules say this is not a buildable lot. I would like it deemed not a buildable lot so that I can then, so that I can then go to Celia Journée and get classified as Chapter 132 as an unbuildable lot and have it taken off tax records for mom. Do we certify unbuildable or does the building well, department certify, certify wetlands and then it's their job to recognize that it's unbuildable? I mean, the building put? department. No, the assessors. So oh, the assessors. we're basically verifying the wetlands that are out there, which I think everybody knows is there. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So the, the the Dorito, as you said, is it the little green thing? In the so I made <coughs> green the area that could be buildable, and the red line is the 50 foot away okay. from vegetated oh, okay. wetlands. So the work was done. I just didn't have it before you last week. Or last and you week had somebody. Time. I wasn't here last week or last meeting, and so you had somebody. The plan I Survey. had for you, it, it was already No, done. I'm it's just clarifying in. that it's, right, right. that's not like a this NWI is, mapped wetland. This is done it's by Jonathan you. Markey. We have yeah. the border vegetation. So you vegetable just had that yeah. the plan That's all. It's all yeah, it's already been walked and yep. built. And, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm sorry, I missed the square footage of the Dorito. <laughs> the Dorito. <laughs> <laughs> Tiny. So over here is a home and primary and reserve. So trying to fit a home and primary reserve on the that piece just isn't going to happen. But what is the square footage of the Dorito? I don't have a figure for you, but if I can it use the bar? available figures, it's about 50 feet by 50 feet and a hypotenuse that isn't straight <laughs> cutting through it. So I don't think anybody's building a home in a septic system with a reserve there. So 3,500 3, square feet? Okay. Is that right? Less than 2,500. 2,500. Uh, and half of that, so not a lot. Uh, 50 50 2500 half of that 1250 so I don't think anybody's putting a home there yeah, and we don't want to meet the waiver requirements anyway right. Yeah. right so hopefully graphics along with the words help to make the point clear and uh, I should think we're heading in the same direction we don't want to build on it we just would like it to still be part of the family farm and not have mom taxed as a buildable lot because that mm -hmm. just doesn't make any sense. Okay. So basically we would need, you want, we need a motion for that? Yeah, yes. I'm just wondering how much we should go out on a limb. I mean, yes, we well, agree with already, the, We've already. You agree with the, being a wetlands, but I was thinking that it's the assessors that really got to do the pass, the final judgment on it. Right, but we have to <coughs> let the assessors know that it is wetlands okay. and that we feel as though it's not buildable. And that we have a bylaw in place. Right, right. That's more important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Somebody yes. want to make a then somebody want to make a motion to that so that Amy can send a letter to the Lyle. Assessor? The assessors. Or the assessors. Either or both. Uh, probably you both. You'd want to. What would want it copied? Yeah. Somebody want to make a motion? So I will make a motion that the Conservation Commission um, agree with the wetland line as presented and deem the aforementioned lot as unbuildable by town bylaw standards. Do I hear a second? I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 
Thank you very much, and the Webster family will continue to be good neighbors because this is you guys right that here. That will stay on file. Lyle, can you leave the Dorito filing? The Dorito. I'd be <laughs> happy to make a copy, but this is the only one I got at the moment. We will vote when you leave it then. <laughs> you can always come in and make a copy in Do I have here. A copy machine? Like, exactly. Done. Good question. It probably turned itself off at this point. All right. Can I come back and visit you and get my original back? Uh, yep. I have an eight o'clock and a ten thirty. But when I get in around nine nine thirty, I'll leave a copy and it'll be on the counter for you. Thank you. Perfect. I'm doing my best to be agent for mom. I appreciate for your help. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. So I just said Andrew moved it. Did somebody second it? Anna. Yeah. Unanimous. Request certificate of compliance, 27 Fort Pond Hill. It's so that was kicked down the road until he is here. Okay. Ten Pleasant is done. And because I managed to copy the old agenda, not the new agenda, the next thing on the list was um, an update on Cottage Way. Well, somebody want to speak to that, or? Come on. And then after that, we'll go into session. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, so uh, the appeal was done to your guys' order of conditions. Um, the state came out and did a site walk, and some of you were there for that. Um, then uh, the DEP passed the superseding order of conditions on October 3rd. They signed that, and the McDonald's appealed um, the superseding order of conditions. So right now we are waiting. And you received notice of that? I received notice for okay. that. And that was, I let's see, that was postmarked on the 16th. Okay. Um, so, and Denise Child is the um, wetland chief, and Megan Silby is the co coordinator person that's mm -hmm. handling the case. Um, they, we're now waiting for a pre-conference hearing. We haven't gotten the information yet on when that's going to be happening. Um, I actually spoke to Denise today, and she said that we should be hearing anytime soon. Okay. Um, so, and she's um, she's hopeful that she's like, you know, this project's going to move along. You're going to get permitted. You're going to be able to do your work. Okay. And so that's okay. I'm really hopeful for that. Um, and as you guys all know, um, on for the town bylaw, um, we were served with the court case. Um, I was served on the 26th for that. So um, I've had a meeting with my lawyer, and we're now, um, we have to respond, I think, by the 15th okay. um, to that. Okay. Um, or until you guys submit the administrative okay. file. Okay. I think that's so what you'll saying. keep us abreast of your work with DEP? Yes. Okay. And I think that's all mm -hmm. we need for the update well the, the 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 issue was that she had done some some tree cutting um without erosion controls being put in but no 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 stump removal just the tree mm -hmm. cutting in the buffer zone everyone got calls from the abutter um basically went out and said you know stop so i wasn't clear if you stopped working the buffer zone you continued cutting outside of the buffer zone okay so the you abutters know. thought that you kept working in the buffer zone so at, at that point, you know, especially because this is under appeal, whether or not you would want to issue an enforcement order. Are you done for, for work that, that she did not notify us before she started? Yeah. Well, and I, um, on that day, I started that tree work um, thinking that I was doing work outside of the superseding order conditions, so it wasn't under the superseding order conditions, and so that's why I didn't set up any waddles or erosion control or didn't notify. Um, Amy or DEP that I was doing work. I did tree cutting along the driveway for clear and safe passage. And from what I understood when I read the Wetlands Protection Act, that was minor activity that didn't need review. So I understood that that was work that I could do and it was outside the superseding order conditions. Um, and the when work- When you say outside of superseding order, you mean 
outside of the work on the plan within the buffer zone? Yeah, and so this is where, you know, me not having maybe the right legal counsel, you know, I was understanding because I wasn't, I was just doing tree work that was <coughs> minor activity but was a part of mm -hmm. the overall scope of the plan. Right. I only cut trees, you know, one, two, three, three trees versus the six trees that were needed to put in the retaining wall. Okay. Um, so I minimized the work that I did only to be um, just in order to be able to do work. I initially was starting this because I wanted to be able to put my well in, right. which is outside the 100-foot buffer zone. So in order to do that and to be able to cut the trees that I needed to cut outside the 100-foot buffer mm -hmm. zone, um, and plus, you know, with everything that has been going on with my neighbor, mm. um, there is that, um, you know, the safety issue is still a concern of mine. Okay. Um, so um, back to the original question, are you done cutting? Yes, I am done all work and I've actually... So every all work will stop until DEP has issued, so um, are we asking her to go ahead and put erosion control in? Presently, or just to cease? I, I don't think it's work that, that needs erosion controls, and a lot of times has that chicken and the egg thing about you know do you do your clearing or because okay. you can't get your erosion controls in. So the ground has not been disturbed. Oh, okay. Um, so the only reason I really elevated this was because we don't know how long it's going to be before work can restart. Right. Um, and just want to make sure you know didn't think it. Did you have somebody come in and clear cut and take the stuff all away? I no, um, what I ended up doing is because I also read the laws is um, you know if I'm keeping wood for my own use so the work that was done the first day which was a half day of work with the bucket truck all that work um, there was birch trees um, hemlock um, the logs I cut myself for firewood and is stacked outside the 100 foot buffer zone on property and all the wood chips from that day are um, on site which I'm going to be using for right. erosion control. Um, the second day worth of work, the first um, bucket, uh, the first chip truck, I kept all those chips. Um, and most of that was pine and hemlock. Um, and there was, I think, a couple, was there any? I can't remember if there was logs from that day that I cut. I think I finished cutting on the Sunday. They cut Thursday, Friday, and I cut um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, for all my firewood. They came and picked up. I was in contact with um, uh, Denise Child on Friday because um, I couldn't get a hold of Amy because I didn't have email. There's the whole miscommunication communication thing. So I ended up talking to Denise Child and she said as long as I was doing work outside the 100 foot buffer zone on that Friday I could continue work. And um, I have my emails. I don't know if you have copies of them or do you guys want I, copies I of them? I don't have them. Um, to she wanted to know when the work was, you know, outside the buffer zone, um, when work was going to be completed. Um, so I communicated over that. They came and picked up the logs. They thought they'd pick them up on Saturday. They didn't. So on Monday was the alternative. So I communicated with her when the logs were picked up and so when all work was done. Um, and when I spoke to her about it today, because um, the McDonald's did, they contacted Amy and they had their lawyers send a letter to Denise, um, you know, requesting to revoke my superseding order conditions. And she said that um, they were not um, pursuing that, that for them they thought the resources were best used to keep this project in the permitting process, not in the enforcement process. And she's like, that could change because she's like, that's in condition that you're not doing any more work. Sure. Okay. So that's where she, you know she was standing. So presently, you're not doing. No. Work. Okay. And she's and and she <coughs> and I talked, and I think that's the same with here too, because I guess there was some ways I'm a little confused as to who I'm supposed to communicate with, and so I guess I should now just everybody. <laughs> Everybody's getting everything, <laughs> and because I told her I wasn't doing the well, and she's like, well, if your well's outside the hundred foot buffer, you can go ahead and do that. And you know, it's, I'm not saying you can't do work outside the hundred foot buffer. And I said, well, what I'm going to do is if I decide to do any work, I am calling <laughs> and yeah. checking nope. and making sure. And so because I know that this is, you know, yeah. I'm going to own this property for a very long mm -hmm. time, and I want to have a good relationship with you guys. I want to have a good relationship with the state. And um, I'm trusting um, 
that this will all work out and I will be able to move forward with this project. It's um, the McDonald's have um, said that they gave me an offer to um, sell me their property or we're taking you to court. And so um, mm -hmm. this is going to be a very... Um, well, we certainly can't comment on, on any of that, but um, just need to be assured that uh, you aren't doing any other work right now, and that's yeah. the, the sound advice, and where um, the trees that are down, don't grind them, don't do any anything like that as well. Oh, the it's, stumps. It's all stumps. Oh, oh no, stumps. everything's going to be, yeah. everything's yeah. going to be. It's, it's cleaned up. Yeah. 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 Cleaned up. And so you may go ahead and do the well, or you're... Right at the moment... Question. Um, the money is <laughs> my well money is going to my lawyer. <laughs> so, so just keep keep Amy abreast of if if that mm -hmm. changes. So I think the the best course is to have um, good communication with everybody. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. I appreciate that. Cool. Thank you. Okay. We had some discussion about issuing a cease and desist. Is that anything you want to? Well, that that was just kind of what the discussion was. I don't know if anybody really feels the need for it or not. If she stopped working, I don't see the need. Yeah. I'm just wondering if that's our part, considering the rest of it's that's going on. Oh, you've got the applicant in that has said that they're not going to. So. No, but I just. A lot of times, the guidance for an, an enforcement order is if the applicant is not doing anything. Okay. Um, or if it's really egregious. Yeah. And this is outside of the buffer zone. I can't see that we would. Well, some of the work well, had been in the boat. Yeah. Some of it was inside. Yeah, yeah, along the existing driveway, so it was inside the, the buffer zone, so. Not to give you any more grief, but we have to look out for ourselves, too. Oh, I understand. I understand. And, um, you know, that's why I wanted to explain to you, you know, the state's position and, you know, to take responsibility for my misunderstanding and to, to I, know I that. wouldn't do anything more. I would wait until this whole thing is done. Yeah. I would, I would just leave the site as is. Yeah. That'd be my. That's my advice. That's kind of where I'm coming from. It's winter and coming, and with my business, I need to be working and focusing on doing fall cleanups and you know getting yeah. myself buttoned up and. Right. Um, so yeah, that's kind of. I appreciate that advice, and that's kind of where I'm, I'm headed. Okay. And okay. okay. All right. Alrighty. Okay. We appreciate you coming in. Oh, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, if you have an extra copy, I'll take them just to make sure I, I didn't miss something. To officially adjourn this portion of the meeting, yes, yeah. yeah. to go into well, well, right. can, I think I gave you a little script you can yep. use. Yeah, right? we need to. At, no, I got it. So at 9:47, we're adjourning. Adjourning the hearing. So and then, well, you're, you're you're not adjourning the meeting. You're going to go into executive, executive session, session mm -hmm. but to not resume the meeting afterwards. Right. Right. There, there's so a make, little, you can make a motion. So I'll make a motion for the commission. There, there's actually a little. Oh, a script. Okay. Yeah. 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 We should close the door. I well, think. We, leave, we need to. You can't. Yeah, you, you have, have to, to close it first. You yeah. have to do the yeah. open this meeting yeah. and then open up the executive session. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. follows. We can make that motion. I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Well, it would it would be you need to request a motion that the commission vote to convene an executive session. Right, I'll do it. So make a, a motion. A request a motion that the commission vote to convene an executive session for the purpose of discussing strategies with respect to the Middlesex Superior Court case, 
uh, McDonald versus Littleton Conservation Commission and Mass DEP appeal in the matter of Kristen Kozokas because the chair declares that having such discussions in open session may have a detrimental effect of the commission's litigating position and not to convene an open session after the conclusion of the executive session. Therefore, the motion is made. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Well, I, need, oh, I need a roll call. Carl? Here. Aye. Aye. Rachel? Aye. Andrew? Aye. Julie? Aye. Sarah? Aye. Jim? Aye. Anna? Aye. Okay. All right.